Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Ray Fisher Stadium here in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And you've tuned in to WCBN Sports' coverage of Michigan baseball as they take on the visiting Maryland Terrapins in this first game of this three-game series. And I'm TJ Fossmeyer. Alongside me here in the booth is Mayor Cosner in this one. And Michigan's looked, looking to continue solid Big Ten play following a pivotal series win at State College versus Penn State last weekend while also rebounding from a blowout 16-6 loss to in-state rival Michigan State on Tuesday. And it's a beautiful day out here for baseball and we'll get underway shortly. We will run you through the defensive alignment for the Wolverines as they take the field. We have Dylan Stanton at first base, Mac, uh, Tim Brook at second, Darnetti at short, and at the hot corner is Cole Caruso with Sharon the outfield for the Wolverines. From left to right is Steven Rustich, AJ Garcia, and Mitch Voigt for the Michigan Wolverines. And on the mound is Dylan uh, Vigay. And then catching is Brock Leakgabe. And we welcome you. We welcome Mayor. It's our first baseball game of, of the year, and it's a gorgeous day. Absolutely incredible day to play baseball, am I right? And we, we have some fans here um, at Ray Fisher Center, right? Yeah. People ready to watch some baseball and watch this Big Ten action. Yeah, and this Maryland team, the visiting Terrapins, come off back-to-back -back Big Ten titles. They're certainly an impressive team to watch. And both these teams are very unique, a very new team. For the Wolverines, there's 27 newcomers, 20 of those being freshmen. And for the Terrapins, up and down this lineup in the pitching rotation and in the bullpen, there are a ton of transfers um, for the Terrapins. Just we'll very different teams in general. I mean, yeah. if, if we're comparing the starting lineups, we see that the Wolverines have four freshmen in the starting lineups while the Terrapins have only two freshmen in the starting lineups. And uh, Dylan Vigue, the starter, starting pitcher for the Wolverines, is a freshman. So we'll see how he'll do under pressure against a good Terrapin team. Yep, I agree. And we will run you through the Terrapin lineup as we go on. It's Braden Martin, the freshman left fielder who's taking the box, takes that outside for a ball, 1-0 count. Braden Martin, the freshman left fielder, just named Big Ten Freshman of the Week over this past week. Check. All right. And Braden Martin gets that. Darnetti cannot make a play. And Braden Martin reaches base for an infield single and a leadoff runner for the Terrapins. Then Chris Hapokian will follow the righty, number 10, freshman third baseman again. And you see at the top of this Terrapin order, two freshmen up with a runner on first. He'll take a big cut at that one for a quick strike. Dylan Vigue on the mound. He's had a great freshman season so far as he delivers. Another big cut at that one. Outside pitch for 0-2 count. Vigu sets, delivers. Outside, 1-2 count. And he's been throwing some heat in these first two pitches. He's really yeah. Do it again. One, two count, no outs. He will check his swing, think better of it. Low, two and two count. Martin leads off. And a pokey in, takes that one foul down the third baseline. 
do it again. 2-2 two, two count. And here we'll see the decision making of Vigu. Yeah. See how he decides to take it from here at the start of the game, set the tempo. Yeah, and this coaching staff has really put a lot of trust in him. The freshman has had a pivotal role on this pitching staff early on. He needs fires, and that is past the catcher. Martin will advance to second. There will be a runner in scoring position here in this top of the first. With the poking still on with a full count. And Vigu, that outside off-speed pitch, got by the catcher in Legib. We'll do it, full count, runner on second. The pokey in, set, slow. And he will ground that to Darnetti at short, who will be unable to make the play. Diving save to prevent the runner from advancing. Great play by, Dar by Darnetti, but there will be runners on first and second. But you know what, that, that's a pivotal play right there. Yeah. To start the game off, you're at the top of the yeah. first. And if that slides right by Darnetti, it could very possibly be 1-0 right now. Yep, I agree. And Chris Apokian's older brother, Eddie Apokian, will follow him in the three hole. The junior from Potomac, Maryland, will set close to home plate. He sets in, Vigu sets, looks back to second, fires, shows bunt, will pull back, and that'll be a strike 0 oh, 1 count. This Apokian tandem, the brother duo, has been pivotal for this Terrapin team. The main offensive contributors for this Terrapin team as Vigu delivers for another strike, 0 oh, 2 count. And he's quickly ahead here with two runners on, no outs. Imagine batting right after your brother. Yeah, I, I know. Mean, it how incredible must that be for their parents to watch? Yeah. Eddie Apokian, the transfer from Cypress College, had a great season there out in California. Very versatile player. And he followed his brother who committed to Maryland as a freshman. And they've certainly made an immediate impact. As it's a one-two count, Vigu delivers. Fouled that one back. Still one-two. And Akopian is batting 375 on the year. That's very good batting yeah. average. Team lead actually, 36 hits, one home run, 20 RBIs. Went four for five with two runs against Georgetown on Tuesday. No. He is fighting here still, one two count with no outs. And his little brother is not that far behind in the batting average, no. batting 337 as a freshman. So very impressive for both brothers. Yeah, no, I yeah, I agree. It's unique to see, you know, a brother tandem do so well on the same team. It's gotta be so Absolutely. unique for this locker room. And Vigu delivers inside, and that'll be a strike. Got caught looking there. That looked inside to me, but Called strike by home plate umpire David Buck. That's a big strikeout for Vigu with runners on and now one out as Sam Honar will step into the box. The lefty from Naperville, Illinois, senior third baseman. And he will set in here. Vigu looks back to second, fires outside, ball one. And Honar has, has traveled around the college baseball landscape, first committed to SIU, and then went to Heartland Community College before settling at Iowa for two years and then finding another home here for Maryland as Vigu delivers. That'll be a strike, 1-1 one, one count. And pretty impressively, Vigu's debut was only a little over a month ago as a yeah. freshman, and now starting right now, continuing doing a great job on the mound and that by Honar will be fouled back reaches Yost the ice center yeah that <laughs> certainly has a power on it so do it one two count with one out runners on first and second and Honar was a pivotal part of that really competitive Iowa team last year who hit for average and had a bunch of extra base hits. As that pitch by Vigu will be outside, 2-2 two, two count. And 
And this Friday starting spot for any college baseball team is such a pivotal part for any pitching staff. And to have McGue step into this role as a freshman, it's really pivotal just to show the trust the coach staff has him as he delivers. And that'll be grounded to Darnetti again. That'll get past him into left field. Martin will round third and score. The throw will be in at third and he will be called out. Papokian, who is rounding second, digging for third, was called out. Great throw by Rustich at left and great tag by Cole Caruso. Great defensive play for the Michigan Wolverines as, as there is still a runner scores. One nothing Terrapins early in this one. And now we've seen two instances where Dernetti made a great play and then where he wasn't able to capitalize yeah. on the opportunity. And we'll see if how he continues to do yeah. in that position. He's been tested early on. I think all three plays into the field have gone to Darnetti. Yeah, they've both all gone to him. Yeah, so he's been tested early on. As Kevin Keister will step in, the senior shortstop from Delaware. And he took a quick strike, 0-1 count. As Vigue will check the runner at first, unsuccessful. He will check the wristband. Keister waiting in the righty batter's box. Vigue step onto the rubber, look to first, look into the battery, delivers, and that'll be grounded past the second baseman into right. The runner will halt at second. And again, we'll do it with runners on first and second for the Terrapins. Two outs with Jacob Orr, the right fielder, stepping into the box. And this is a big test for Vigue. Good hitter, or batting 3-4-7 on the year, junior with experience. We'll see what Vigue throws his way to try to get the Wolverines off the field. Or we'll step in, look at that one who, that was in and, a, in and down for 1-0 count. Similar situation from before. Runners on first and second, but two outs. Vigue delivers inside again. That'll be called a strike to even up the count. Jacob Orr has been a longtime perennial starter for the Terrapins as he knocks that straight to Cole Caruso, who will make the force at third and will retire the side. But the Terrapins come across with one to take it a one nothing lead early on in this game as the Wolverines the top of the order for the Wolverines will be set to hit and I think it's a good first yeah inning for the Wolverines you know keeping them a team that can a Maryland team that can really explode with runs we yeah know that they've been able to do that in this season keeping them at bay allowing one run off really something that could have been avoided and that I'm sure will be fixed and talked about in the dugout yeah, no, I agree. This is a potent part, or top of the lineup for the Terrapins. But we will see the Wolverines come on with A.J. Garcia, the freshman leading off, who has only recently started to see the lineup with injuries to Greg Pace Jr. and Jonathan Kim, who's but really coming. Phenomenal. Yeah. He's been absolutely phenomenal. Electric to watch him play. Yeah. Hails from Chicago, Illinois. I, I know a few of his mutual friends, so... <laughs> It's an interesting, interesting to call him as the leadoff hitter for the Wolverines, and and yeah, he's hitting hitting 500. It's only 14 at bats, eight runs that have come across, and he was pivotal in the Penn State series. And before we've seen him in the nine hole, and early on in this series, he's trusted with the leadoff spot here. And following him is Mitch Voigt, the great two-way player, and then the power threat and Stephen Rustich will follow. One, two, three for the Wolverines. Guaranteed hitters at the bottom of this frame. And then we'll go to on the mound for the Terrapins is Kenny Lippman, the senior righty, who's had a 4-4-4 ERA, a 1-2 record, 26 innings pitched, 13 earned runs, 25 strikeouts, and 16 walks on the year. It's been a proven commodity in this, in this rotation. Actually leads the team in strikeouts. The grad transfer from Deniston. The first team All-American in Division Three, And normally he pitches mostly out of the bullpen, but he will get the start today. 
as A.J. Garcia steps into the box. Steps into the lefty batter's box. And like we said before, Garcia's batting 500. So we'll see how he continues to replicate that right. today against a tough Maryland pitching crew. He will take that first pitch for a ball. Gets ahead in the count, 1-0. And it's early days for him as far as you know, his offensive stats, but he's still been going really well. Absolutely. As Littman fires here, and A.J. Garcia, the freshman, will take that for ball two, 2-0 two count. Littman delivers here. That'll fall into the zone for a strike, 2-1 count. But Garcia getting ahead in the count. Looking like an experienced hitter out there. Very patient as he waits for Littman's next pitch, who will deliver. He will hit that to left field. That'll be a base hit down the line. Garcia will round first, dig in for second. Will slide in for the double. Lead off double for A.J. Garcia. And he will continue a hot offensive start so far in this freshman campaign. And that is something you love to see from a freshman who's a first at bat just really getting into the lineup and then a beautiful just yeah. drive to the left field. Yeah, he pulled that one, or sorry, pushed that one out down the line as Mitch Vaught will dig in into the righty batter's box. The dependable sophomore from Whitefish Bay, Wisconsin, who will take that pitch low to get ahead in the count 1-0. And that's going to be the story of the game today, I think, for Michigan, being patient, yep. not getting too ahead of themselves. They're going to be down at some points like they are right now when it's 1-0, and we'll see how they respond to it under pressure. And he'll take that one again, as you just said. He'll be patient again. 2-0 count. The runner on second. That rests on Voigt's shoulder. We'll lift it, let that one go again. A 3-0 count. This, you see this top of the order really patient so far against the back-to-back -back Big Ten champion in the Maryland Terrapins as Lippman fires here. Garcia will steal, trips up, will be out. There's a good jump by Garcia, but lost his footing, and that'll be one out for the Wolverines. Unfortunate break for Garcia. And those are things you almost expect from a freshman. They're going to try to get jumpy, try to do yeah. things. And sometimes they're going to work out. Sometimes mm -hmm. they won't work out. But uh, I think I, I like seeing that uh, aggressiveness at the start of the game. Yeah, I, don't I, I don't mind it. Yeah, I agree. I like it. As Mitch Vaught takes that for a walk, four-pitch walk, easy for Mitch Voigt. And again, there will be one runner on. And Mitch Voigt with the power threat and Steven Rustich taking the box. And he's had himself a great season to transfer from Northwestern. Leads the team in runs, home runs, and RBIs. Had a two home run performance earlier on last or two weekends ago against San Diego. He's a big bat for Michigan. And we'll, he, we'll see what he does here as that takes first pitch for a ball. Lippman will check the wristband, dig in. Sets, delivers, big cut by Rustich, to even up the count one and one. And Rustich, although he started pretty slow this season, he's increased his batting average by more than a tenth over the past 10 games. So slow and steady, he's getting back up there, and he's now second on the team for batting average. Yep. As he takes that one, that low pitch in for a called strike by the home plate umpire, umpire. and he's down one two count with one out, runner on first in this bottom of the first inning. And that'll be outside. The runner tags for second. He's called out. Close play at second. Voigt take the advantage of a wild pitch. Darts for second. But the ability of Maryland catcher Charlie Glennon, he is called out. The umpiring crew will corral by the pitcher's mound to discuss the call. It was a close play for sure. I looked like he got his hand in there. That was a close call. Yeah, and it was, was heads up base close. running. I like, as you said earlier, I liked your point about 
you know, seeing Michigan's base running aggressiveness from Garcia, who had that unfortunate trip up, and then Vaught, who took the advantage, or Voigt, I'm sorry, take advantage of the wild pitch, but Glennon really crowded that one in there and fired that one off, so it's a close yeah. play either way. It was a good recovery by him. Yeah. Great no, recovery I, by Glennon. I would think he is safe. They will, they will check this one. Watching the replay. Yeah, the replay's up on the scoreboard in right center field, and ooh. He, ooh, he looks. It's a very close call. It's a close it's play. It's a very, very close call. I think I can, it could go either way. I think this would be a big break for the Wolverines if they were able to have a runner in scoring position with one out and the power threat and Rustic Herust still on. We'll see slow motion. He looks safe. safe. He looks safe. He looks safe, at least from this angle. So I, I would expect them to reverse this. as Lippman continues to stay warm on the mound. And that would be two very aggressive plays to start off this game for yeah. the Wolverines. And it kind of indicates to you what the game plan is going to be for the rest of the game. They know it's going to be a tough game. Like we said, the Terrapins are, for the past two years, the leaders of the Big Ten. They know how to play baseball really well. Right. They've been doing it with talent. They've been doing it with experience. So the Wolverines know that they need to be able to make some plays and create something for themselves. Right. And you almost have to with the pitching staff. There's a lot of questions with the pitching staff. You know, with a lot of experienced guys going to the major leagues or graduating over this past year, and you know the bats are going to be there. So you have to take advantage with runners on. You have to take advantage of those opportunities. And I like seeing the aggressiveness, knowing that, you know, not knowing how questionable your pitching staff is. But Vigu has still... You know, it's still, you know, gone very well in this one so far. Getting out of some pretty big jams with runners on and, you know, depending on the defense behind you. So the umpires come out. He will be called safe. The call is reversed. He does agree with us here in the booth. So that so Voigt will be on second with Rustich still on. With two outs, we'll see if Wolverines will, uh, will be able to capitalize before I believe that'll back be, to the dugout. I believe that'll be one out. I don't think there will there'll be one out. But we'll see. He'll have a 2-2 two -two count with a runner on second. He digs in, close to the plate. Lippman fires. He will take a cut at that one, fouls that one back. And we'll do it again at a 2-2 two -two count. And Littman's kind of out of his comfort zone here. He mostly comes out of the pen, but he gets the start in this one as he checks back to the runner at second, looks at the plate, delivers. That'll be outside to make the count full. 3-2 count. Still with a runner in scoring position. Colin Priest is up next for the Wolverines, a designated hitter. So we'll see what situation he comes up to as Rustich takes that pitch in. Two straight walks for Kenny Littman. And again, we'll see runners on first and second. And Littman's been looking a little bit un uncomfortable to yeah. start this game off. Yeah. You may seem some wild pitches from him. Well, I mean, that just comes with the inexperience of him not starting. As noted before, he come, mostly comes out of the pen in these relief situations, but he gets the nod from the Terrapin coaching staff, and you know the command is just not there, so we'll see the... Battery will meet on the mound as Colin Priest digs in here for the Wolverines. Priest, the freshman, gets the pivotal cleanup spot. He's the designated hitter. Top recruit from Florida, three-time All-State recipient, and he's, again, the pivotal freshman presence for the Wolverines. As he takes that first pitch in for a strike, low pitch at that. The command is getting up there for Kenny Lippman. As we'll do it at a 0-1 count with runners on first and second. He will take that pitch outside to even up the count. 1-1. And it's great to see how the freshmen are developing as the season mm -hmm. progresses because they're going to be pivotal towards the end of the season and in the future years. 
as that is popped up. That will be a routine fly out, out in center. Vaught thought about tagging. Think better of it and will retreat back to second. So that will be two outs with runners on first and second. Solid contact from Colin Priest as Dylan Stanton, the first baseman, will dig in. And you're right, with you know these freshmen truly making an impact, there's 20 of them on this team, so they have to make an impact. Yeah, even though this year you could say it hasn't been Michigan's year in baseball, they haven't had the best record. They're going it's still early on. 9-16 and 16 this season. It's still it's a long still season. still early. As he'll take the first pitch hack at that one, but that'll be right to the right fielder. Quick last two outs. Littman gets out of the jam, so that battery meeting must have worked for him. But Michigan sees early base runners and sees aggressive base running so far as the lineup, as the lineup cards will flip and Maryland will see the plate again. Dylan Vagu will take the mound. Yeah, and let's talk about the Terrapins a little bit. So at this point in the season, they're 19 and six, and they're two and one in conference play. With conference play really just starting off, and the Terrapins are on a two-game winning streak after an extra innings win against Michigan State on Sunday and a midweek win against Georgetown. And all time in this matchup of the Wolverines versus the Terrapins, the Wolverines lead 22 to 13, and they are 10 and nine in conference games. So. History in the kits that the Wolverines will win, but only time will tell yeah. for today. Yeah, but it seems like this Maryland program of late have really picked things up. Head coach and Matt Swoop, you know, his first year as head coach, but he's been on staff for Maryland, you know, for 11 years now, and has been a pivotal part in bringing in bringing six NCAA regionals appearances to this team as well as two super regional appearances and back-to-back -back Big Ten titles. But he fills in for a big spot as the former manager in Vaughn left for the University of Alabama. And I, I'd say he's really taken up that vacancy very well. Absolutely. Filled those I mean, shoes. I mean, two back-to-back -back Big Ten yeah. championships. I mean, right now, obviously, it's too early to tell, but there is a four-way tie in the Big Ten right now, what the Terrapins are right there. They're at yep. the number, number one seat, so we'll see how they continue. Right, so this top of the second inning, we will have you know, Alex Calarco digging in, the junior designated hitter from Wilmette, Illinois, the lefty. So he take that first pitch for a ball, he will take that one for a ooh, ball. That looked into the Look, zone from like up here. To me. Yeah, that looked like that just got part of the plate there. We'll do 2 0 count. And Calarco, the transfer from Northwestern, playing his former teammate in Rustich in this one. So that's an interesting dynamic as we see the series develop. But he has stapled himself into this lineup. He's had a slower start offensively relative to last season, but still putting up some great numbers as he. That is a deep drive to center field. Garcia in the shade will make the play. About two steps away from the warning track, and that's a easy out number one for Vagu on the mound. As Charlie Glennon will dig in next. And the Terrapins have been able to get hits against Vagu. That is yeah. his fifth hit already that's just at the start of the second inning. So mm -hmm. we'll see what coaching changes will happen to try to limit those hits because at one point or another, they're going to be unreachable for the outfielders. Right. So Vigu will deliver. That's a big cut from Glennon. We'll get up in the count, 0-1. Glennon, another transfer from Deniston University. Did very well there, 346 average. Eight home runs, 49 RBIs last season, but has not seen the starting lineup since March 10th, so this is his first start in about three weeks. He shows bunt, will pull back. Be a 1-2 count. And the sun is out. We'll see how that impacts these two cold weather teams. It's 52 sunny degrees here. Yeah, and he'll take a big cut at that one. Strike three. That'll be Vigu's first strikeout of the game. 
Got him on the off speed, way out in front of that one. As a nine hole hitter, we'll dig in here for the Terrapins, and that is Elijah Lambros, the center fielder, wearing the classic stirrups. You don't see that very often in college <laughs> baseball. He'll take a big cut at that one. Quick strike one off that lively fastball from Vigu. And he's looking good out there. We're seeing some confidence right now. That yeah. strikeout was big. We saw some yep. emotion out of him when that strikeout. He will deliver again, and that'll just just tag part of the inside of the plate, and that'll be a 0-2 count. So he's quickly ahead here as he checks the wristband, looks to get Lambros out in quick fashion, three pitches. He will deliver. Lambros will check his swing that's in the dirt. That'll be called a ball. One, two count. Like he wanted the call from Blue. Will not get it as Vigu delivers and that'll be knocked in the left field down the line. Rustich will play it as Lambros thinks about rounding, will think better of it. We'll retreat back to first and there will be a runner on first with two outs. As the lineup card will flip over for the Terrapins as the leadoff and Braden Martin, who's had an electric past week for the Terrapins, will dig in with two outs and a runner on. And he was able to get on to the first base last time, so we'll see if we'll able, if Martin will replicate mm -hmm. it this time around. Freshman batting 288. You take that first pitch down in the zone, that'll be called a ball. He'll quickly be ahead. 1-0. And it's great to see this freshman versus freshman competition. Yeah. Right? Who, yep. who knows how much longer we'll see these two battle it out with mm -hmm. this Big Ten play. That'll be a, that'll be a strike. Leggy checks the runner at first, but we'll just eat it. So counts even with two outs, runner on first. And Martin Waits for Vigu, who will set and deliver that pitch. Outside part of the plate, called strike. And he gets ahead, one-two count. Friendly call right there. Yeah, I've seen the umpire, David Buck, has really favored the outside part of the plate so far in this one. So we'll see if Vigu will take advantage of that. As he looks at the runner at first, looks towards home plate, will deliver. The runner will go. Darnetti will make the play on that one as it's grounded to him, but he... Doesn't matter, Martin will reach again on another infield single. And that was a big play by Dernetti. That was athletic. He was coming one way, yeah. reversed the other way, and if he wouldn't have got that, possibly would have been another one of those runs that we saw in the first inning. And yeah. He's been making some great plays there. The hardest defensive position in baseball. Yeah, and it, that's potentially two run-saving play, plays that Darnetti has made for the Wolverines. That's Chris Hopokian will dig in. Take a big cut at that one for a quick strike one from Vigu. And what we see from the Hokopia and siblings that they like to swing and yep. they swing hard. Yep. But he will not swing at that one as he is right that he's called a ball. One one count. With Lambros on second, Braden Martin on first. Chris Hopokian will wait for Vigu, who checked back to second, will deliver. That'll be in the dirt. Well, I should say in the turf <laughs> for a ball, 2-1 count. And if you don't know Ray Fisher, this whole field is turf, unlike Carroll Hutchins Stadium, which is in left center field, dirt infield and grass outfield, so different playing environments. As Vigu will even up the count, 2-2 two -two count with two outs, two on, and this top of the second. And pretty impressively for the Terrapins, the first two in the lineup are both freshmen with Martin and Hacopian mm -hmm. starting it off for them. So they have a lot of faith in them. Well, both these teams have freshmen leading off. Yeah. So that just shows the trust that the coaches have has in this incoming freshman class. As the count's full, 3-2, pitch low by Vigu. So you don't want to walk into a bases loaded situation for Vigu with two outs. So as he will deliver, that'll be in the turf, he will walk. So now it'll be bases loaded for the Terrapins as 
Eddie, Eddie of Kokian will dig in. The Terrapins' most dangerous hitter. This is where it gets dangerous. This yep. is ideal situation for the Terrapins and quite the opposite for the Wolverines. Mm -hmm. The junior first baseman will dig in. He is 0 for 1 today. As he will take that pitch in and low for a ball. Gets ahead. 1-0 count. So you have Lambros on third, Martin on second. Eddie's younger brother, as he will strike that one into center. Lambros will definitely score, as Martin will round third, score again. That's a two-run single for Eddie Hapokian, and he will drive in two. That'll be his 22nd RBI on the season. Ties his younger brother in Chris, so that brotherly competition is getting ever more stiff as he plates two to make this a 3 nothing ball game. And I'm sure that's only more competition and more motivation for those siblings to keep yeah. on getting those hits. As Sam Honar, the cleanup hitter, will dig in with and runners we'll, on first and second. I want to see how Vigu settles down and really gets into his zone again, how he was yep. a few minutes ago. Yep. And the infield will meet to meet with the freshman. Pitching coach will come out. We'll talk this over. He was really close to getting out of that, out of that they jam with two close. outs. Really close to getting out. That would have been a huge out. It didn't matter with a solid hit to center field, but Garcia got good throw in to limit the damage, limit the bleeding. That's a big two-run single for Eddie Apokian, and he just continues to be that offensive leader for the Terrapins. And the Terrapins are hitting 7 for 11 already in, at the top of the second. So that's something that they really want to see and they want to continue for the rest of the game. And if they're able to replicate that, it's going to be a long day for the Wolverines. Exactly right, Mayor. And it'll be a 1-0 count. The meeting's over. Quick meeting on the mound. As Honar will dig in, ahead in the count, Vigu checks the runner at second, will deliver, fouled back to even up the count. It's a great day for baseball here in Ann Arbor. Slight breeze that looks like it's slightly helping and pointing towards left field. So we'll see how that affects things. Vigu will deliver big cut from Honar to make it a one-two count. And you see a lot of you see a decent amount of whiffs from Vigu on the mound. Absolutely. So Vigu will get ready checks looks and that'll be hit out to left and it will be off the wall runner from second Chris Apokian will score Honar will slide into second for a double and now there will be runners on second and third and the runner from second will score to make this a four nothing ball game a big top of the second inning for the Terrapins that was a strong hit also that was Close to being yeah. a home run. That was close to getting out of the park. Uh, yeah. Line drive straight to the back wall. Yeah, and that's a high wall up and left. You don't know the dimensions here at Fisher Stadium. That is a high wall. It's 312 out there, but that is about a, I'd say, 20, 25 foot wall. As Kevin Keister will ground that to second. Easy out at first. Limit the damage. Get out of the jam for Vigu. But the Terrapins will plate three in this top of the second as four, five, six, or six, seven, eight will come up for the Wolverines. As we will take a quick break here.
We are back to try to figure out some technical difficulties to no avail as Cole Caruso will quickly ground that one out to third. Easy out, easy play. The Maryland third baseman. And now is where we'll really see the hitting abilities of the Wolverines. They've been able to really be a strong hitting team this season. Yeah. And we'll see if they're able to catch up a little bit because right now they're down 4 0 at the bottom of the second. And we have at bats or Nady. Yep. So you have the shortstop and Kyle Darnetti, who will foul that first pitch back, way back. Make this a 0 1 count. Kyle Darnetti has been a grad transfer from Oregon State, really produced at that powerhouse of a program up in Corvallis, Oregon. Had three RBIs, one run scored on two hits and a win a few weeks ago over Toledo. So he's a big, big bat for the Wolverine offense. He takes a big cut at the 1-1 pitch, make it a 1-2 count with one out. He will readjust the batting gloves and step into the box again. He waits for Littman, who will deliver on the outside pitch to even it up, 2-2. Two -two. So you would check the sign from Michigan coach Terry Smith. Get back into the box. Littman quickly delivers. He will pop that one up. Catcher should make a play on it, and he does. Charlie Gannon will make the play on a high pop-up for a quick out number two as Mac Timbrook, the second baseman, will dig in to the lefty batter's box. And usually in this weather when it's going to be an easy catch, we were thinking he might have dropped that one. It is no clouds in the sky today here in Ann Arbor. Bright sun out, 52 degrees, so the sun does have an impact today. Yeah, I mean, it's straight up there too, straight up in the sky. So it's a tough play, but great defense from the Terrapins as Tim Brook will dig in. Home plate umpire will signal to Lippman, who will quickly deliver in for a strike. Quickly ahead, 0-1 count. As Tim Brook, another grad transfer from Kent State, second team all Mac last year. We love some action as he fouls that one down the third base line. A, he's quickly down 0-2. This is where you hope to see experience kick in for these teams and carry the Wolverines a little bit. Yep. As that pitch by Lippman is outside. Stone Cold take from Tim Brook. And while there is a lot of freshmen with 20 new freshmen on this team and eight of the 28 newcomers are grad transfers, that's good experience coming into this Wolverine team. And that'll, that'll be pivotal down the stretch as he takes another ball to even up the count 2-2. Good tenacity from Tim Brook in the box. As he waits, gets fires that one back up the middle and that'll be in the center for a base hit. So a good two out single from Mac Timbrook. And there will be a runner on with two outs. That'll be only the second person on base, if I'm not mistaken, with Garcia being the one in the first inning. Yeah. And then Tim Brooks able to get something going for the Wolverines. We'll see if they'd be able to replicate it. Right. So Brock Lightgive will step in, the catcher. And he'll take that one for a strike. The freshman from Portland, Oregon, highly recruited, second team All-State, raked in high school as a senior, but has inconsistently seen the lineup as he takes that one for another strike. And again, two consecutive batters, quickly down 0-2. As A.J. Garcia digs in, should Lightgeave get on, but to no avail as he takes a big cut at that one Quick three-pitch strikeout for Littman to get out of it. And that is a quick inning for Kenny, Lightman, Kenny Littman on the mound. And we'll keep things at 4 nothing as we flip into the third inning. And when we were saying that Littman seemed a little bit off in that first inning when he was pitching and making some mistakes, he seems to have settled in pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just that it's coming with that new role. He does not see 
starting appearances very often, but he gets the nod anyway. And despite a relatively struggled first half, he settles in in the second to keep things status quo at 4 nothing. And for a team like Maryland, they need to find those relief pitchers early on in the season because yeah. as they try to make a run later on, they're going to need to rely on people like Littman and these guys that are usually not starting for them in some tough scenarios and situations. Yep. You're exactly right, and that's, and that's a winning formula. You find that. I mean, what's stopping them from three straight Big Ten titles for the Terrapins? This is a very impressive team, you know, Prepping for this game, you know, this pitching staff, a very, very deep pitching staff, both in the rotation and for the bullpen and up and down the lineup. See multiple people, multiple batters hitting over 300. It's a very impressive team, and it's an early test for the Wolverines. And I think it's a good test for the Wolverines. Yeah. Like we keep on saying there's so much fresh, there's so many freshmen on this team. And you want to test them early on to see really what they're made of and see how they're able to do when they're put in these uncomfortable situations. And... Already down four runs in the third inning is exactly what we're talking about. Yep. As Jacob Orr, the junior right fielder, will step in. Normally plays uh, infield, but he gets the start in right. He is 0 for 1 today with a fielder's choice, or reached on a fielder's choice, I should say, and he digs in ahead of the count, 1-0. Takes that one over the plate to even up the count. Jacob Orr, a perennial starter for the Terrapins ever since he arrived to College Park. As he takes a big cut at that one, and that'll just go foul down the third base line to make it a 1-2 count. And we'll see how the freshman and Dylan Vigu handles through adversity down four. Absolutely. Already has 55 pitches on day with two strikeouts. We'll see if he can get that strikeout number a little bit higher before he steps off the mound. Yep. He had, he had those two strikeouts in big spots with runners with runners on and particularly runners in scoring positions. So you know he can come alive in some of these big moments as he delivers, and that'll be fouled back. He'll do it again in a one-two count. And early on, this coaching staff led by Terry Smith, who has – you know, has many experiences in many different programs from Miami of Ohio to Indiana to Arizona State. Uh, he, a ton of experience, again, is putting Vigu in a big spot. So I mean, that's, a, that's a big ask for the freshman, but that ask comes with trust from this experienced coaching staff as or will foul that off again, three straight fouled off pitches, and we'll do it again at one-two count. Vigu fires. And Orr will take a big cut at that one. Vigu's third strike, strikeout on the day as Wolverines will go around the horn. Big tempo setter for Vigu. What as we're looking from Vigu is consistency now. Yep. We're seeing that he's able to make the plays. Let's just see how often he's able to make these big plays. Right. And you just, just to get comfortable, just one inning without allowing a run would be great for, great for his confidence. As Alex... Uh, Calaro, Calarco, excuse me, will come in. He is 0 for 1 on a fly out to center. Digs into the lefty's batter's box. As he takes the first pitch for a strike, Vigu will deliver again. High pitch to even up the count. As Charlie Glennon is on deck for the Terrapins. And Clarko has had a very successful career so far for Maryland as he takes a big cut at that one, fooled by the off speed, and that's surely a confidence booster for Begu as he's up one and two. Begu will fire another pitch. Be low and away. Stone Cold take from Calarco. It'll be a 2-2 count. I was watching some highlights from Calarco, who played uh, college ball at, in the Northwoods League. He was very good there. As you'll make the count full 3-2. Calarco 
Oracle still hasn't made contact with the ball yet. We'll see if he tries to take a big old swing. Yep, exactly. We will see what he does here in a full count as you give delivers. He will take a big cut at that one as that is a base hit in the right field down the line. Vaught makes a weird sliding play, but nonetheless, the Clarko will check up and it'll be a stand up single. And it seems to see that Voigt slipped down there. He was going to get the ball and just slipped right out of his hands and get back up. Yeah, I'm surprised Clarko didn't round. I mean, he was watching what Vaught was doing. I'm just surprised he didn't take advantage of that. Yeah, I was ex expecting him to continue to yeah. him, but Passive base running from the Terrapins and Clarko right now as Charlie Glennon, the senior catcher, will dig in. He's had a slow offensive start so far this season. It takes a big cut at that one. Oh, one count. You're seeing a lot of, again, a lot of whiffs. You're taking advantage of the Terrapins' ability to take big swings. As we get, we'll take that one. Outside, that'll be a ball. One, one count for Charlie Glennon. Gets the start today, who is 0-1 already on a strikeout. Solid contact, but that'll be foul down the third base line. And we'll do it again at a 1-2 count with one out. And Glennon, the senior, is not bat batting the best at 1-8-2, but he's still in the starting lineup. Yep. I put some trust in the seniors. And he will be fooled on that off-speed pitch. Tells himself an explicative on that one. Did not like that swing. It was ugly swing, swing rather. And that's a four, that's the fourth strikeout for Dylan Vigue. As the nine-hole hitter and Elijah Lampros will come on, the junior center fielder who scored on a single in his first plate appearance. And that pitch over the head of Lampros, Clarka will advance to second. Wild pitch from Vigue. Lucky for Lambros to duck from that one. That was head level with him. So good reaction times from the junior center fielder in the box. Two outs right now, top to third. What would you like to see right now from Vigue? I think he's been fooling a lot of Terrapin hitters on his off speed, so I'd ride that personally. As he takes advantage of the fastball, as a base hit in the left, Clarko will round. Great throw from Rustage. He will be called safe by home plate umpire David Buck. Great throw from, from Steven Rustage from left. That was on a line. That seemed really close. A frozen that. rope from left field from our position right behind home plate. He looked out. I, I questioned the decision from Clarko to round third. It's a big, aggressive base running from him. Watching the replay right now. It's yeah, to see. It's, a t it's a tough replay to see. The umpiring crew will get together for the second time in this game. He did and seem very confident, though. He what a throw from Rustage. That was on a dime, and Lightgate, I thought, got the tag in. It was a high throw. Yeah, I was about to say, not only a great throw by um, Rustage, but also a great catch by yeah. Lightgate. Yeah. That vertical from Lightgate really put on display. And yeah. So really haul it in and put it back down. Very impressive play yeah. right there. Because he had to go from, you know, ju practically jumping to get that to going back down to apply the tag. I thought he got it in. I Man, but what a throw from Rustage. Wow. I mean, a great. Anyway, nonetheless, great hit from Elijah Lampros. His second single of the game. And Calarco so, also, that was aggressive running by him to really go past third. Yeah. And then it, you saw, he saw red in his eyes because he was going to run straight through late game if he had to to get that run. Yeah, and I, as I said before, I questioned it because the hit was, the base hit by Lambros was pretty much right to Rustage. So he was able to, you know, set his feet and really dig in to make the throw as we see yet another replay in the scoreboard in right center field. The throw, without a doubt, gets there in time. It's the question about the tag by Light Gibb. That's the question here for this umpiring crew. It's a close call. Definitely not as confident as the earlier review. It's a close call, and it's a huge call. It's a, I right agree. Now. It's a huge that call. from being 4-0, and then Wolverines are able to take up the offensive to 5-0 Terrapins, and still with more opportunities to score. Yep, you're exactly, so. you're exactly right. And you're seeing the defense, 
you know, especially with Darnetti and Short, who's made some great plays, some run-saving plays, too. Out and short, and then Rustage with a frozen rope from left field to potentially save a run. We'll see what the, the call is from the umpiring crew in David Buck and the second base umpire in Pete Peterson. Yep. And let's talk about Martin, who's coming up to hit right now. That is, if the call stays the same, he is two for two today as a freshman, and that's just incredibly impressive play. Yep. So the umpiring crew is done watching the replay. They are coming onto the field. We will see. He is called safe at the plate. So Leitke must not have gotten a tag in. So that's an unfortunate sequence of events for the Wolverines. But nonetheless, great defensive effort from them. So we at least know Rustich has that arm, has that arm talent to make those throws. So it is a 5 nothing ball game in the Terrapins' favor as the lineup card will flip over for the third time in this game as Braden Martin will set into the box. Shows bunt, will bunt down the third base line, will trickle foul. Questionable, questionable decision there with two outs, but... And I was surprised to see that because... But the infield's not playing Marvin in. Really swing it and yeah. Really make some big plays, so... But the infield's not really playing in against this leadoff hitter. Brandon Martin doesn't bunt too much, doesn't really have to. He hits for average very, very well. Again, the current Big Ten Freshman of the Week is currently hitting 600 on the week, and that's only going up with two hits as he takes an outside pitch for a ball. As Vigu, his, his pitch count's at 73 right now. It's a high pitch count. High already. pitch count. We're still in the top of the third, so we'll have to see what Michigan does. This will be a bullpen game as Lambros digs for second. He will be called out. Great throw from Leike to catch the runner on second. Make-up play from the late tag, and that is a big third out. Impressive throw. That was a yeah. Throw. Put that straight on the rope. Yeah, great tag from Darnetti who got back, got into the bag at second and again you see the Terrapins who earlier in this game had some passive base running decisions but they come on here in this top of the third and show some really aggressive base running they're feeling comfortable the Terrapins that's without a doubt they they know they're, on the, they're with the lead they know that they can make some uh, risks so we'll see how they continue or we'll see if the Wolverines are able to close the lead a little bit yep yeah and you I mean it's you know, I mean, the pitching staff, that's the biggest question on this team, but you know the offense can click when it, you know, it has clicked in the past, in the early season tournaments, and as we start Big Ten play, just like Penn State, the big series win, and that really comes from their offense. Absolutely. You know the bats can come alive, so it's just a matter of when, and so we'll see how that happens. Hopefully it will be soon because yep. already a third through the game and zero runs for the Wolverines to the five of the Terrapins. Yep. And that's a parallel with the Michigan softball team. I've covered around 10 softball games this season so far. So I know the softball team very well. This is my first baseball game of the season. And just like the baseball team, softball team's offense, there's always a question on when it's going to get going. And of late, it has gotten going. So we'll see as um, this season, as the mid, as the Big Ten stretch of the season begins, we'll see if the bats can, in fact, come alive as the leadoff hitter and A.J. Garcia will dig in. Had a leadoff double, continuing a hot offensive start for the freshman. Garcia's been the one to start off the offense, so we'll see if he's able to do that right now. Yeah, and I think from, from Terry Smith's perspective, this was an honest, unexpected jump in Garcia's performance. He's rather under the radar as one of 20 freshmen, but has really come alive and now is the starting center field. Granted, because that is because of injuries with with Jonathan Kim and Greg Pace as he grounds that two second, and that'll be a quick out number one for the Wolverines. Great play from Honar at second. Mitch Vaught will dig in to follow Garcia as we will see the Terrapin infield shift in on the left side in between first and second. First baseman, 
The first baseman will be the only one playing. We'll see the second baseman, Honar, move to the other side of second to play traditional shortstop alongside the shortstop and the third baseman, really capitalizing on Vought's pull-hitting tendencies as he evens up the count one and one. As Lippmann delivers a big swing from Mitch Vaught to make this a 1-2 count. He wants it. You can tell the boy yep. wants to hit something big. He's swung it 32 times. But the most damage you can do in this spot is one run. It's a four-run margin. I mean, all the smart thing to do here is just get on base and Absolutely. let the heart of your order do the dirty work for you as that is a 2-2 two -two count. The Michigan faithful did not like that call as Lippmann will set and deliver Voigt will swing at one, or sorry, foul tip that one off to keep himself alive. Looked like a swing and a miss from up here, but foul tip that one. We'll do it again in the 2-2 two -two count with one out. With Rustich, who made an excellent throw from left in the last frame on deck as Vought waits. Stone Cold take as that off speed is outside for a ball to make this count full. And you see a lot of tenacity in Vaught. He's worked the count in his favor as he looks at that one for a called strike three from David Buck behind the plate. Let's compare Littman to what the kids had to do. Littman has only pitched 43 times. Only 43 yeah. pitches throughout this game compared he's to what, like 74 or 75 in the game? Yeah, he's been very efficient so far in this one. So that's his second strikeout of the game as Rustich will dig in to the righty batter's box. And Littman in this one in his in a untraditional spot for him seeing a start has really come alive as Rustich will pop that one up. Should be a routine play by by the first baseman, and he will make the quick pop out, and that is a quick three outs for the top of the order for the Wolverines, and the Terrapins will see the batter's box again. Two straight innings for the Wolverines, where they're unable to create yep. any momentum or anything really. Yeah, and that's what you don't want to see, you know, successive innings of three up, three down for the Wolverines, and that is the case here. Vigui will come back in, no surprise here. As his, but his pitch count is something to be aware of in this one as he's had 76 pitches. And as you noted, Littman very efficient in this one with only 45 pitches in this one. And they both have the same number. The Gue has two more strikeouts than um, uh, Littman, but you would still like to see his pitch count be a little bit lower than what it is right now at this point in the game. Yeah, Vigu's stuff has definitely been there to create those swing and miss opportunities. But Lippmann, you know, and you see that with a lot of relievers in that they're very good at you know, relying on your defense to make those plays, you know, putting the ball on the ground or allowing batters to, you know, just get under it for those routine pop-ups as we just saw two straight pop-ups in that frame and fly outs. So, I mean, you're seeing what you, ex I mean, from the Maryland pitching staff, you're seeing exactly what's expected from Lippmann. Yeah, yeah, and we know that the Wolverines do have pitchers that they like to use. I mean, although it was a blowout game versus the Spartans earlier this week when they lost 16-6, to they used 10 pitchers in that game. It yeah. was only really until the ninth inning where the Spartans scored seven runs and really pulled away. So in many situations, it's a little hard to tell what the coaching staff is going to do with the pitchers. So we'll see how they adapt to this game to hopefully close the lead. Yep, that'll be an interesting development in this one as... The two-hole hitter and Chris Hapokian, the third baseman, will dig in. Shows bunt, will pull back, and that'll be a ball. Gets ahead, 1-0 count. We'll check the wristband following Coach Swope's call. We'll get back into the box. Wait for Vigu, who will deliver. Shows bunt, pull ba pulls back again. And a smart move as that pitch is outside will work the count two up. And Chris Hapokian is one and one and one right now. And another pitch on the outside part of the plate. 3-0 count. And, and Ryan Martin had been on 
second base already twice today. Sorry, Brandon, Brandon Martin's been on. I'm sorry for that. I thought Pokin was on. So Brain Martin, 2-2 two, two in this one, two singles. Figue will deliver. Again, outside pitch, a five-pitch walk on four outside pitches. And that's impressive pitch use by a freshman. Yeah. To really be knowing that you're in the lead, knowing you don't need to make any erratic choices to just let the pitcher make the mistake. And if something, if a situation arises where you can hit the ball, then go for it. Yeah, no, I agree. And none of those outside pitches were really particularly close. So those yeah, were, they were all stone cold off. takes. And Martin really never flinched on any of those as Chris Apokian will follow. He is one for one on a single and a walk in which he scored following that walk. He will dig in. Vigu will check the runner at first, who has proven his speed in this one. As Apokian will ground that down the line in third, just foul. Lucky break, Caruso. Yeah. Caruso would not have been able to make the play on that one. So Pokin will dig in again with an even count, one and one, no outs. Runner on first. Figu will check the runner on first again. Will deliver to the plate. Now Pokin will again foul that down to third. The third base coach for the Terrapins had to duck for that one. Self preservation mode. Lucky for him to just get out of the way of that one. We're seeing where Hakopi is really trying to hit it right now. Yeah. Trying to put it right back to the wall where yep. one of his teammates hit it right before. Right, and you see the second baseman in Mac Timbrook shade more left, and you see the center fielder in AJ Garcia shade left and deep as well. As we will run a 2 2 count. Hakopi works as even on a low pitch in the turf. As, as Chris's older brother. Eddie will follow, and that'll be a hit by pitch. Again, on that left side of the plate. And we'll, again, for the Terrapins, have runners on first and second. It's deja vu all over again. The Terrapins are able to work themselves the into this situation. Thing. It's been the exact same situation almost every inning. They're able to get the first two guys on base, and then runs start coming after that. Yep, I agree. As we will see a mound visit, um, we will see a pitching change, actually, for the Wolverines. So, Vigu goes in for three full innings plus a little bit of the fourth. Has allowed, has allowed five, given up ten hits on two walks, four strikeouts, one double. No home runs, though, on 86 pitches. So, he's had a rather shaky start on the mound for this one, but nonetheless... The coaching staff trusted him enough to put him in this spot, and he got a, a, some really good jams early on. Look, he had some bad moments, but he also had some great moments. Right, I agree. Obviously, the score reflects as if he did not do a great job, but I still think he showed some signs where they can still trust him to start the game off. Right, no, I agree. He showed some great swing and miss stuff. What we're it, noticing from the is that when he gets confident and in the zone, it, he's pitching very well, but sometimes it's very erratic. He's pitching way too out or in the dirt. But there was a few times where he would get two strikeouts in a row or really put the Terrapins on the toes. Yep. So in to replace Vigu is Sachem Ramos, the right-handed freshman. So we see another freshman on the mound in this one from Brooklyn, New York. Decorated recruit. So far hasn't had the best season so far. A 12.46 ERA in four and a third innings pitch. Two strikeouts, three walks. Appeared in the blowout loss to Michigan State on Tuesday. Pitched one and two-thirds innings off and allowed three hits, two earned runs, and a walk. So we'll see him in this spot with a five-run margin. Let's see if he can keep, it, keep things a status quo here in the top of the first. And Sachin Ramos is a pretty new guy. Not much on him, but... The coaching staff clearly sees something yep. to work with and something that can be improved. And, and I think it's very interesting to see that two freshmen back to back if they're starting. Yeah. Because that's not something typical that we that is seen. But I do think it's something that is important to know because 
like we said, the season is still early. It has not been the best season for the Wolverines, but they're investing in the future. Right. No, I agree. You beat me to the punch there. I was just going to note how it's interesting to see how the coaching staff is really kind of leaning into this freshman class with Garcia starting in center. You see a leadoff hitter, yeah, right? You see AJ Garcia leading off as well. Colin Priest in the four-hole hitter. You see Vague, um getting the start today and Sachem Ramos in this pivotal relief spot. So we will see Chris Hapokian's older brother in Eddie step up to the plate. He's one for two in this one so far. Reached third on a first in a two RBI single earlier. So Ramos will dig in for his first pitch with runners on first and second. Take that pitch in for a ball. The runner on second, or both runners rather, will advance on the wild pitch. So we'll have two runners in scoring position for the Terrapins. Not a great start for Ramos here. And Eddie Apokian's got a great chance driving two runs here as he's ahead in the count. 1-0, no outs, and two runners on. And it is intimidating to be put in this situation. Right. The freshman pitcher, you're down 5-0. You already have two um, Terrapins on base. Mm -hmm. So he's putting in an uncomfortable situation, and we'll see how he responds to it. I agree. As Eddie Apokian drives that one down the third base line, but that'll be foul. Very solid contact from the junior against the freshman. And we will do it at a 0-1 count. Ramos rocks back, will deliver. Hapokian again down the third base line for a foul. And Hakopian is not struggling at all to get contact on these balls. No, I mean with a 378 average team lead, you know, you have that all, you know, all the confidence in the world just Absolutely. to make the plays and being a junior already having experience. And if you're the Terrapins, you're salivating at a moment like this because your three-hole hitter can make a play as he bloops that one out to left field. Will be a fly out. Horostich, who has already proven his arm talent, will keep the runners status quo on second and third. So the potential sacrifice opportunity is stifled thanks to Rustich's arm. And that is a big out number one for Sachem Ramos as the four-hole hitter and Sam Honar will dig in, who has had a hot start with a single, an RBI single and an RBI double in this one. So he's already, he's driven in two of Maryland's five runs in this one. So he waits for Sachem Ramos to get ready. Both are ready as he delivers. Outside pitch for a ball, 1-0 count. Sam Honar. Ramos will deliver. That'll fall into the zone for a strike to even it up. That will be his first strike today. Yep. So we'll do it a 1-1 one, one count with one out. Ramos will deliver. Outside pitch for a ball. Easy take for Honar. So Honar works himself into a hitter's count with a 2-1 count with two on. We'll see if Honar can produce as he waits another outside pitch. He delivered two straight pitches that are in the exact same spot. Not much thought process for Honar to hit them or not. Yeah, it's stone cold takes. You don't you don't see a flinch at all from him. And you've seen the two freshman pitchers for the Wolverines, you know, find a home on that outside part of the yeah, plate. Yeah, pitching very out today. Yeah, and and that's a walk, four straight outside pitches for an easy walk. So the bases will be loaded with one out. As Kevin Keister will step in. We have a senior hitter right here who is not afraid to make contact with the ball. Yeah, and he's already proven himself as he singled earlier in this game. So this is a big spot for the Terrapins to really open up this game. With the bases loaded, one out. And Sachin Ramos, who's coming in to relieve, has put himself in a pretty bad jam as he just falls behind early in this at bat. 1-0 count. You'll take that one inside for a strike. Keister had to move his hands up for that one. He was expecting to. I thought, it was gonna be a hit. I thought yeah, I thought he was going to get hit. So I, 
you know, assumed a ball call, but Ron, so the count's even. See, one's all around with a runner on each base. One, one count with one out. And that'll be a check swing. Home plate umpire delegates to first base umpire John Sapphire, who calls that in Maryland's favor. That was a check swing, 2-1 count. Ramos rocks back, will fire. That'll fall into the zone for a strike to even up the count 2-2. Two, two. That's a big pitch for Ramos. This would be this would be a big out for him here. Absolutely. When base is loaded, you do not want to make a mistake where it's going to pitch it straight to him. Yep. So Ramos will deliver inside pitch to make the count full. 3-2 count, bases loaded, a walk would score the runner and from third. So walk here would score the runner and Martin home. Takes a big swing at that one, pop up to third. Easy play by Cole Caruso. He drops, he drops the, but infield fly will be called out. That was the announcer's jinx in full glory for you folks. But the infield fly rule, that's a big break for the Wolverines and keeps things status quo. So big break for the Wolverines that the infield fly rule was called on a drop ball from Cole Caruso and it'll still be bases loaded with two outs. And Jacob Orr, the right fielder will step in, who's 0 for 2 in this one. will step in close to the plate in that righty batter's box. Ramos will check the pitch from the dugout. Will set, will cradle it, rock back, inside pitch again. Well, also to, or at the turn his body a little yeah. bit to avoid being hit. Yeah, I mean, it concerted effort to get away from that one, but lucky for him, was not hit. That would have been unfortunate for the Wolverines. That would have scored Martin from third on a hit-by-pitch. So Ramos will pitch it again. That'll fall into the left side of the zone for a strike to even it up. Jacob Orr a reached base already on this one and a fielder's choice. And the umpire will call time. Not sure what this one's about. So to run you through the game situation here, Jacob Orr, the junior right fielder, the righty, 0 for 2 in this one, is up at the plate with bases loaded. With Martin at third, Hogan at second, Chris Hogan at second, and Honar at first. Big spot as Ramos will deliver. That is a cut to right to the third baseman who will make the grab for the double play at the force out at third. That is a big out what, what a for break. Sachem Ramos. That huge break to get out of that bases loaded jam. And that's exactly what the coach staff wanted out of Sachem Ramos to get out of that get out of that jam you know he made it worse for himself unfortunately but he got it out and looked confident doing it obviously it's too early to tell this is a long game but that could have been a difference maker right there you let a big hit rip from there and you give up another one or two runs and it starts getting a little too far to reach yeah and Ramos primarily a reliever as he stepped into this relief um, position in this one and you see it again their ability the entire bullpen really so, you know, force stuff on the ground and let your defense make plays as they did on the third baseman unassisted double play. Great play from Cole Caruso at the hot corner as Colin Priest will come up for the Wolverines, who's 0-1, as Dylan Stanton will follow. And Cole Caruso made that great defensive play, will follow. So those are your three guaranteed hitters for the Wolverines should, should they not reach base. You see Kenny Lippman again on the mound. These are through three is allowed two hits, two walks, two strikeouts, one double on 45 pitches. So he's getting through this order very efficiently, which is exactly what Matt Swoop Absolutely. and his staff wanted to see in this one. And he's really come alive in this one, despite his bullpen, his bullpen role on this team. He's come alive in this start. So Colin Priest will dig into the left left-handed batter's box, or the lefty batter's box, I should say. So he will wait for Kenny Littman, who quickly delivers outside pitch for a ball. He will quickly get ahead, one up. -oh. 
and Priest will rip that to right field. That is off the wall. Priest will round first, dig for second, will slide in there for an easy double. And that's a big, big leadoff extra base hit for the Wolverines. And the Michigan faithful applauds in approval. And that'll certainly get something going for the Wolverines. The leadoff double for Colin Priest as Dylan Stanton steps in. That is exactly what you need to do. I was right before that, I pitched something I was about to say. This Wolverines dugout is missing some energy. They're missing the momentum. And yep. you needed a big hit from someone. And coming from a freshman, I mean. Well, to do that early in the count, that's extra impressive. So there's a runner on second. Dylan Stanton steps in, the senior. As that is a wild pitch from Littman, Priest will advance to third. And now there's a runner for the Wolverines 90 feet away from scoring their first run in this ball game to potentially make it a four-run game. And Dylan Stanton's got a prime opportunity to knock in his sixth RBI of the season. So we'll see if he can capitalize on that. As Littman on the wild pitch will deliver. Stan takes a big cut at that one. Really wanted to make this one a three-run ball, three ball game, I should say. So the count runs even, one and one. Runner on third. Stanton will step into the box. Littman checks the pitch. Fires and Stan will rip that right back to the pitcher. That'll score Priest from third. And that's a big, big RBI single from the Wolverines and Dylan Stanton. And that was rifled right back up to the pitcher who that had to duck out of the way to get that one. That could have been an ugly one, but fortunate. One two feet away from it. Yeah. The pitcher straight in the face. Fortunate. Time by Littman. Yeah, fortunate from Kenny Littman to get out of the way, but that is a rocket off Stanton's bat to score the runner as Cole Crusoe made the great defensive play in the last frame will step in with a runner on first. No outs still. So this is a great offensive inning for the Wolverines so far. We'll see if they can continue this momentum. And you're right. You know, the Michigan dugout needed to see some energy, and this certainly injects the injects crowd, a great amount into that dugout. Energy. The crowd was starting to get out of it, and finally they're back into it. Yeah, Cole Crusoe will again take advantage of that as, that, as he rips that to left field. And again, you see two consecutive singles, one to center and one to left from Stanton and Caruso. So you're seeing the middle of this order really provide for this Wolverine offense. And that's where the senior experience is starting to finally come in and able to make some different difference maker plays. Yeah. You have a junior and a senior that are now getting the Wolverines back into this game. We'll see if Dernady can continue that. Right. So Kyle Dernetti will step in. There will be a mound visit for the Terrapins. Smart move from the coaching staff here to dial in Littman, who arguably this is the first crack he's shown in this game. A plating one. And you've seen both from Stanton and from Crusoe, solid contact straight, pretty much right back up center field. Either left center, straight back up to center field. So they're, they really found something in Littman's pitching that they've really taken advantage of as there's already scored one run. With two on base, we'll with see if they can base. capitalize more with that. So we'll see. That was a quick mound visit. We'll see if Lippman will listen to what the coaching staff is saying. The infield met, and they will go back to their respective positions. And Kyle Darnetti will step in. The Oregon State transfer. Excellent career in Corvallis. And that's proven to be a big bat for the Wolverines and a pivotal defensive anchor at short. So we'll do it. Nothing, nothing count with no outs with two on. So this is, again, continuing the offensive momentum and a big chance. So Dardetti will show bunt, will pull back. Glennon fumbles that one, but the runners don't bite on that one. So that's a 1-0 count. Dardetti now steps into the box again. The second pitch of this at bat, Lippman will fire it off. Will bunt straight back to the pitcher. And Lippman fires that to third. Will be called out. So he emphasizes getting the lead runner. Smart play from Lippman. But there's still two runners in, two runners on for the Wolverines with one out. That would, you know, have, been, that would have been a huge play if he was able to stay on base. And get yeah. Safe, but 
you know, mentally at first, I kind of questioned that. It looked like it would have been an easy out at first because, I mean, that that was not a great bunt. That was straight back up to Lippman. So I thought you would have got the easy out at first. That was a close play at third, but nonetheless, the Terrapins get the out and prevent the runner from being 90 feet from the second run coming across in this inning. But there's still two runners on with Mac Timbrook up the senior second baseman who is already one for one with a single on this one. He takes a big cut at that one to right center field. That'll likely get over the head. And that'll be a ground rule double. And that should play. That should play one of the run or both of the runners rather. Yeah, that plays both. both I think so. Yeah. That should play one of the runners on. Puts one on third base and the other one on Yeah, puts base. one on third. That's kind of unfortunate that that went over the wall. That easily would have scored Caruso on, or sorry, Darnetti on first. It, it barely went over the wall. That went over yeah. the wall less than a foot. But again, you see another rocket from Mac Timbrook. You've seen a, a, another solid contact from this Wolverine lineup. And that'll be a three-run margin, 5-2 ball game in this one so far in the bottom of the fourth. You see the Michigan offense come alive with a nine-hole hitter, in, or pinch hitting rather, Will Rogers. Subs in for Brock Lightgib in this one. So he sets in. The transfer from Arizona State will take that first pitch for a strike. Will Rogers, a two-way player, is a reliable bullpen presence for this pitching staff, but normally starts a catcher for this one. He's had struggled offensively in this part of the season so far. Will likely pick it up. Takes a big cut at that one to make it an 0-2 count. And right now what you do not want to see is a break in the momentum. You want to see it continue on yep. for at least one more runner. At least put something in play to give the base runners a decision whether to advance with. As Rogers battled some, a rocket to left, and that is gone over the wall. A big pinch hit three run shot for Will Rogers. And it is a tie ball game, 5-5. Five, five. And he come, came up in a big moment. And just like that, the game, uh, the game is over. Absolutely incredible. And as you just said it, the Wolverines need to continue offensive momentum. They certainly did it there with Will Rogers with two runners on. Comes up in a big spot over a 20-foot wall out in left field. That was a rocket off the bat. And that could have gone over another 10-foot feet of Yeah, wall. that was, that was crushed. Absolutely crushed. So I, we will likely see a pitching change after that. I would assume so too. As the lineup flips over, we will see one, two, and three in this order. AJ Garcia is due up next. And boy, what a big spot for what Will Rogers. For what an inning here. for the Wolverines. You're exactly right. Big three run pinch hit home run for Will Rogers as Lippman will indeed be subbed out. He had himself a good game until this, yeah, other than that, a great other game than until this inning, inning. He was playing, in my opinion, incredible. Yeah, so in three and a third innings pitch, he's allowed seven hits, five earned had come across, two walks, two strikeouts, and four extra base hits, including that home run in that last one, but did it at a very efficient clip with only 59 pitches. Absolutely. So yeah. Before this inning, he only led two hits before that. Yeah. So... It's a coaching indicator for the Terrapins, for sure. Right, so that's a so that's a big big change for the Terrapins, coming from a big offensive spark for the Wolverines. And Will Rogers, as I was just going to allude to, really hasn't had a great start offensively. Below a sub 200 batting average, 13 hits, 15 runs. You know, now that is his third home run on the season. And in a huge moment. And th that certainly could spark. Moment. Offensive production down the stretch with a big three-run home run, and he's come up in big moments this season as he already hit one home run against a ranked opponent in Coastal Carolina earlier this month. And, man, he came up in a big spot in a high-pressure situation for the Wolverines, and and they'll, they'll look to continue this momentum with the top of Yora coming up. A.J. Garcia, who's already, who's already one for two on a double, so he has shown his hitting prowess in this one. So we will see Tristan Sarcone, the lefty, come into the mound to replace Kenny Lippman. 
So Sarcone, the graduate student from Dartmouth, Ivy Leaguer, primary bullpen pitcher. He was, uh, as a junior, he was all Ivy League second team. Hasn't seen too much, 12 and a third innings pitched so far. Already has one win tab to his name. Off 12 strikeouts, three walks, and a 7-3 ERA. So he will see the top of the order come up with A.J. Garcia, who's already won for two. Still has a 500 average. As a southpaw will deliver his first pitch, Garcia will show bunt, will bunt towards the left field, uses his speed, glides down the base pass, will be called out by first base umpire John Sapphire. It was a close play. I thought Garcia really had a yeah, chance a for a bunt hard. single, but yes, yeah. I would agree with that. A little too hard of a bunt there. Sarcon made a great play there to fire it off to first. and Just show some speed from Garcia there. Yeah. So that'll be two outs. Quick out for the reliever in Tristan Sarcon as Mitch Vaught will come in. We'll take Stone Cold take on the outside part of the play for a ball. 1-0 count with two outs. And the Zipper doing the formation like they were doing before. They're shifting everything a little bit to the left. Yep. It a bit open. And that's another rocket to left field. Vaught, and that's off the 20-foot wall. Vaught will advance to second. And that'll be a sliding double for Vaught. He comes up big again to continue an offensive spark here in the bottom of the fourth for the Wolverines. And boy, what an inning for the Wolverines. Okay, yeah. As you said it, they needed some energy, and this will certainly inject a high amount of energy for this Wolverine team. And if that wall wasn't so high out and left, that would have been another home run. Another home run. That was about it looked five, like it. Five, yeah. seven feet short from another home run. And uh, we're seeing a, a little bit of a comfort zone for the Wolverines on that wall. It's a little bit of a lucky Yeah, they're, they're pulling it. They really found a home pulling against this Terrapin pitching staff. So Rustich will set in the three-hole hitter, the righty against Sarcone. He will look back to second. We'll think better of it. Will deliver to the batter. Gets a first pitch strike. 1-0 count with two outs. Runner in scoring position. Michigan's already played at five in this bottom of the bottom of the fourth. So a long inning for the Wolverines. Yep. So Sarcon will check the runner at first again. Will deliver. Outside pitch. Stone cold take from Harsich. And they'll run the count even one and one. Again, at least here in the booth, it's getting warmer. So Absolutely. Baseball weather starting to come back as MLB season started yesterday, and college baseball is coming into full swing as Sarcone will yet again throw another outside pitch for for and a 2-1 count. We're at an exciting time for the sports world. MLB coming right up, March Madness. Yeah, it's I, I love March. It's a great time for sports as Harstich – will pull that one down the third base line. That certainly had a home run distance. But that was way into foul territory. So run the count even. We'll have twos all around. Two balls, two strikes, two outs with a runner on second. So Sarcone will check the wristband. Check the runner at second. Think better of it. Hartstitch choked up on the bat, just looking to get some contact. Hartstitch will Flinch on it, but think better of it for a third ball. Run the count full, 3-2 with two outs. Big spot for the power hitting Huge Stephen Harstich. The Terrapins looking to get a break here and step off the field. Yeah, exactly. This, uh, this will be a big out for the reliever in Sarcone. Harstich again chokes up. Will take a ball. And that's a... A tough walk for Harstich. Really ran up the pitch count there yeah. to force the walk. So we'll have two runners on, one on first, one on second. I'm getting tired of saying that. With <laughs> And then Colin Priest will step in, the cleanup hitter. Who has 10 RBIs in the season and three home runs, so he can't hit for that power. He takes a big swing at that one. Certainly swinging for the fences on that one as that pitch was in the turf. And he's down 0 1. Sarcone keeps checking back at Vaught. 
put a curveball right there. Yeah, big off speed, lets that float in there to the zone for the second strike. And we're not seeing big speed at a start cone, but we're seeing more accuracy than what was. Yeah, it's right definitely a finesse pitcher from what we've seen so far. So Priest down 0 and 2 will take the third pitch inside. Lucky for Glennon to hold on to that one. Close to hitting Priest too, that one. Anyway. Yeah. It certainly would have been a bad situation to load the bases on a hit by pitch. So we'll do it on a 1 2 count, two outs, two on. With Priest still up. We'll see what Sarcon throws here. Likely a finesse off speed. We're right on the off speed, but that is in the turf for a ball. 2-2 two, two count. Two outs with two on. Michigan scored five in this one. It's a tie ball game. Really come alive in this one to claw themselves back into this one. And this bottom of the fourth has been longer than the other two yeah. previous innings combined for the Wolverines. And Priest takes a big swing at that one. For a strike, swing and a miss. It's a big strikeout for the reliever, Tristan Sarcone. But nonetheless, it's a big inning for the Wolverine offense. Plating five. Off the three run, pitch in home run for, for Will Rogers. And now we have ourselves a ball game right now. It's yeah, five, we five. certainly have ourselves With a ball game. Momentum is switching to the Wolverine side. And we'll see the Terrapins are able to kind of take it back to theirs how it was for the first hour and a half of the game. Yeah, I mean, and you're seeing just more solid contact, at least from Littman. He was able to produce those ground outs, produce those easy pop-ups, and let his defense make plays. But they found something in this, in the bottom of the fourth, really came alive. So Stanton produced an RBI single that scored Priest. So you saw the whole lineup take at bats in that inning. And very interestingly, now we have another pitching change for the Wolverines. We have number six, Kurt Barr. Oh, yeah, we do see Kurt Barr. Yeah, you're right. So Ramos pitched for about half an inning. For two thirds. Yeah, two thirds of an inning, and now we have Kurt Barr. And then Rogers will stay behind the plate, will share the battery with Kurt Barr. So we'll see a completely new battery. Kurt Barr, normally a pivotal piece of this rotation, but we will see him in a relieving spot in this one. And he has proven himself to be an anchor on this shaky Michigan pitching staff. He was named Big Ten Pitcher of the Week on March 18th when he pitched 11, allowed only one one earned run. Played an incredible game of that. Yeah, allowed seven hits and seven strikeouts. So he certainly has some stuff in this one. And again, you, he's a younger guy, sophomore, sophomore righty from Ontario. Played high school at University of Liggett. We have a lot of Liggett alums in WCBN. Shout out to Kellen and William. I know they're big fans of Kurt Barr, so they'll want to see him come alive in this one. So we'll see the seven-hole hitter in Alice Calarco come in, who is one for two on the day so far on a fly out to center and a single that he scored on. Kurt Barr, first pitch strike on an off speed on the inside part of the plate. So he's quickly up 0-1. No other defensive changes for the Wolverines, just the battery. As Clarko will foul that one off to the third base line, a towering pop-up, but foul. So he will do it in an 0-2 count. Kurt Barr has got a prime opportunity for a strikeout as he does. Drop third strike, will throw it down to first. Merely a formality, but a quick strikeout for Kurt Barr, who comes into this game. That's an ideal scenario for yeah. a pitcher. And that's exactly what you back. want. And that's exactly what you want after a big offensive inning. You come in, quick strikeout, as we see a pinch hitter in Ben Nardi come in, the senior lefty from Potomac, Maryland. Pinch hitting for Charlie Glennon. We will see if he takes over that catching spot. He normally plays Ooh. as he takes a big first pitch. Strike at that one. That, that is fouled that deep back there, yeah. So Ben Nardi, normally an outfielder, you probably won't see the catching spot in this one. They transfer from Catholic University, raked there. Transferred here to Maryland as he takes that one for a strike to make this an 0-2 count. And this is exactly the kind of role he plays for this Terrapin team, mostly a pinch hitter. 
Last appearance on St. Patrick's Day at Portland. But he will see the Wolverines in Kurt Barr as he's down 0-2. We'll take that one for a ball. Will Rogers was ready to fire that down to Cole Caruso at third for the strikeout. Another yeah, premature celebration there, but it's a 1-2 count. It's one out. Now we're seeing some confidence from the Wolverines now with Kurt Barr being a sophomore yeah. after relieving two freshman pitchers. Nardi will rip that one back up the middle for a base hit. Garcia will throw that one back in. But nonetheless, that is a pinch hit single for Ben Nardi. And you see pinch hitters really come alive in this one. Yeah, ben Nardi with the single. Will Rogers comes up with a big three-run shot to left field. It just shows you you never know when you're going to be able to make an impact on a game. Right, and especially right, right and especially for Ben Nardi, who doesn't see that much playing time. It's these pinch hitting opportunities. That's your really your only time you see the field. Yeah. And he makes full advantage of that one as Elijah Lambros comes on. He's had a great game for himself. Two for two with two singles, one driven in and one run scored. As Kurt Barr will throw that into the turf, Rodgers will field that one. And really Keep the runner front, check. The front and the end of the Maryland batting order has had a great inning between Lambros, Martin, and Hakopian. They've all had an incredible game. Yeah, this is and the dangerous spot for the Wolverines. It certainly is. So Nardi's on first, leads off. Kurt Barr will deliver. Chuck Swain from Lambros called a strike. So it'll be a 1-1 count. That pitch was in the dirt, but nonetheless, Lambros still bit on it. Tried to pull back, but to no avail. So 1-1 count with one out with one on on first. Kurt Barr will deliver. And that's foul tipped towards the Maryland dugout. And Kurt Barr will get ahead with a 1-2 count. Kurt Barr looking at his wrist, and we'll see what he'll pull up from here. See if he can get something to make him swing. I like this slider in this one so far. Um, that breaking ball on the outside part of the play has really been fooling been the Terrapin lineup so far. So he will deliver. He will listen to us in the booth on that outside off speed, <laughs> but... Too far outside. Stone cold take from Lambros for a 2 2 count. So you'll see the top of the order flip with Braden Martin coming on. And, see, and that's a big strikeout for Kurt Barr. Way out in front is Lambros on that off speed, just as we were talking about. Exactly. And that's his second strikeout in this inning. It's been working after we've had a big U relief. Pitching with speed and just straight down the line. Yeah. Sometimes a little too out. A little change in pitching really is working for the Wolverines right now. Yeah, no, I would agree. So, using the Terrapins. So the big th freshman threat and Braden Martin will step in. He's had two singles in this one, scored on each of them, and has had a walk. So he's reached base in all three plate appearances in this one. Reached third on that walk. Takes that first pitch for a strike. Kurt Barr really settling into this one. Coming in relief for Sachem Ramos. So we have a tie ball game with two outs, 0-1 count. Brandon Martin, the leadoff hitter, on the Kurt Barr deliver. Shows Bunn has to pull back because that pitch was inside. So we'll even up the count, 1-1. One one. Closer hitting him. Yeah, he had, to, Very close. he had to move away from that one. So Kurt Barr now will be expecting Bunt. Cole Caruso in the infield still staying status quo. Braden Martin will not show bunt, will flinch on that one, but that one's in the turf to get ahead 2-1. and one. And Braden Martin really come alive for this Terrapin team as a freshman. Utility, he will show bunt again. Kurt Barr will play it, will fire it off to first, and will be called out. Close play on that bunt. That was a really was good a bunt, bunt from great Martins bunt. down the line. Yeah. Well, using that arm speed, on um, the crew will review it. I don't question that. That was a close call. Unexpected review right there. That was a close. Yes, I would agree. That, that was, was a close call. Like Kurt Barr coming across his body to make that throw. Yeah, I would agree. I don't think they're going to challenge it. They began to meet, but. They will not. They will go to their respective bases. So that's a big out for the Wolverines who, who allow the Terrapins. That's a big goose egg 
following a five-run offensive inning for the Wolverines to keep yourselves alive in a tie ball game as the fifth inning flips to the bottom half. And now, as you said, that was a great bunt from Martins there. Perfectly right in between the foul, the third base foul line and Kurt Barr, but with and that arm talent. Also who's been a big hitter this game. Martin yeah. Has been really letting it rip. So right. Trying to confuse the Wolverines pitchers a bit. Yeah, so that's a big out knowing how big of a bat he is for this lineup and, you know, how he's performed in this game. He's had himself an, a night with reaching base on three and two of those being run scoring singles. Yeah. So Sarcone will see the mound again. No defensive changes for the Terrapins. So, oh no, we will see Devin Russell step in behind the plate. The sophomore righty. And that is, yep, that is it as far as defensive replacements for the Terrapins. So we're seeing some changes by both teams at the catcher position. So and Devin. The sun is setting here in Ann Arbor. It's about 545. The crowd is getting into it. Mr. Bryce had a plan on the speakers. I mean, yep. what a great day for baseball. It right? is. It is. I don't know. Yesterday really excited me. You know, baseball starting up. My Cincinnati Reds come up with a big win. 8-2 to two in that one against the Nationals. <laughs> I know you're a Marlins fan. I know they just came up short against the Pirates. Still early days. The Marlins every year coming up short. It's, it's early. It's day one. It's plenty of time. So a little bit on Devin Russell. Has seen play, uh, limited playing time both last season and this season, but came up big earlier this week against Georgetown. Went two for three with a, home, a two a run home run. So his first batter will be Devin Stanton, who will pop that straight up. We will see if the second baseman and Honar will make a play. He, in fact, does. The first baseman yeah. and Eddie Hapokian will retreat. And that's a quick pop up for Sarcone as Cole Crusoe will step in. Although Stanton hasn't seen much success today, he has started the last four games at first base in seven of the last ten. Over those seven games, he's hitting it 304 with four doubles and five runs. So he's had a pretty good run these past few games. Yeah, I agree. And he's mostly a bench player for this team, but he's seen the starting lineup of late, as you said. So Cole Caruso, the junior third baseman, will step in. He's one for two on the day with a with a single. He scored earlier in this one, so he's been pivotal in this one. As he takes a big cut at that one, we'll foul that one back over the first base concourse. Yeah, we'll reach the track field over the intramural building. Yes, that ball will travel that far, and we will do it again at 0-2 count. It's down early, but we've seen the Michigan lineup fight in these pitchers' counts. So it's our tenacity. Yeah, they, they yeah, tenacity. for sure. So Sarcone will rock and deliver. Inside pitch. Caruso has to get out of the way. About two inches from hitting him right there. Yeah, he will... Has to retreat a little bit back within the box to get out of the way. Nonetheless, he will fight. Good eye from him. 1-2 count as Sarcone delivers. Takes a swing at that one into the Michigan dugout. And will do things again at 1-2. and two. So Crusoe sets into the box really close to the plate. You've seen that up and down the Michigan lineup. As Sarcone delivers, and that's grounded to the shortstop. And Keister will fire that one off to first, and that is a ground out to shortstop for Cole Caruso. Great play from Keister, who had to make the jumping throw Absolutely. out there. So it's a big second out for Sarcone to stifle any offensive momentum that potentially could have carried over from the bottom of the fifth. And without Dernady at bottom that, of the fourth. he's been 0 for 2 for today. We'll see if he can finally make something happen for himself with no runners on base. Can try to get onto something. Yep. So we'll see Carl Darnetti come in. Starts off with a big swing and a miss for strike one. He's 0 for 2 in this one. The fielder's choice, or he scored off a of fielder's choice earlier. So Sarcone will deliver. Darnetti will swing. That's another ground out to the shortstop. And Keister will make the play yet again. Two ground outs to the shortstop and Keister, and one pop up to. Honar at second. So you see the Terrapin middle the exact infield. quick innings that we saw right before they went yeah. on this big run. They had two of those in the third and the fourth. 
in the second and the third. And they had a big fourth inning, and now this fifth one ended just like that. Well, and that's why for the Wolverines, you got to take advantage of those offensive sparks. I mean, you never know when that's going to come back. And they've been cooled right now. Yeah, you might cool right down as evident in that last half of the inning. But yeah, you're exactly right. You just got to take advantage of, you know, when offense comes, you got to going to make the most of it. And they certainly did to tie that one up off the RBI single and the RBI double. That was later followed by the three-run shot by Will Rogers. Exactly. So we will see Barr on the mound again. I'm sure we will see him in extended time in this one. So I'm sure we won't see any pitching changes for a while. Should he continue the performance he's putting on the present performance so, far. so far? Yeah. He's playing very well. We'll see if he can continue it. And this is the first conference play of the year that Michigan has been hosting. So beautiful day here. There'll be many more to come. So any day, you fans can just come out, watch the game, or if not, listen in on WCBN. We'll be here to provide the coverage for every single game. Yes, we will have coverage for every single game. We will also have coverage later today for the Michigan-Indiana softball series. We have a crew traveling out to Indiana for that. So that should be fun. The Michigan softball team, very fun to watch. And then we will also have coverage of the all-important NCAA tournament hockey, hockey regionals as they face on North Dakota. We do have a crew going out to Maryland Heights, Missouri for that one. So that'll be on later tonight. So Chris Apokian will dig in to start off this top of the six. Kurt Barr, his first pitch about, you know, one foot above Apokian there. Almost over the head. Easy take from him. As it's a 1-0 count. Barr delivers again. Nearly fell over on that foul tip. Back to the netting. So we'll even up the count 1-1. One and, one. and now Chris you're seeing power from Kurt Barr. Before yeah. in the previous inning, we were seeing just some more finesse, like you were saying. Now we're seeing some straight power from him. Well, it's just that ability. You, you know he has that power, and you know he has that finesse to pull the strain. It's a pokey, and that's a deep drive to left field, but that will be fair ball. And that'll be a home run from Chris Apokian. And the Terrapins will take the lead, 6-5. to five. And that was right down the line. Third base umpire and Aaron Woodbury calls that one fair. And that was a very close call. And that, yes. The angle, it looked like to be a little bit left of the third base line. But we'll trust the umpires. But that is a huge hit from Chris Apokian, who is having a day as a freshman right now. Yeah. Absolute day. Batting 3-4-3 three, three now, 2-2 two for two for the day. Yeah, you're exactly right. And the umpiring crew will discuss again their third discussion inside the diamond. And that was a close call. That was an absolute rip from Chris Apokey in there. Bomb. That was an incredible contact. Seen an absolute, yeah, absolute rip over that 20-foot wall. Third base umpire... And Aaron Woodbury called that one fair, and that was over the wall, so a home run. So this is a big call, so they will go to the booth for their third review of this one. So we will see what they do. I doubt they will show a replay. We will see. And this is a big call coming up. It is a big call. Although there was no other um, runners on base, just like we said, it's been a game of momentum. Maryland had it for the first three innings, and they had it very strong, and then it shifts it to the Wolverines. And what the Wolverines would not like to see right now is they go straight back to the Terrapins and let them go on a run. So this is yeah. huge right here. But nonetheless, let's say the call does get reversed. This would still shatter a little bit of Kurt Barr's confidence, who's been looking spotless on the mound true. so far in relief. You know, even if this is overturned and it's still a tie game, it's still got to be shattered because you know you gave up a hit like that. And, you know, if – he wasn't so early on that. That would have been an easy home run. So it's a mental battle in your head right now, and you'll see how you can adjust after that. I but where you hope that him being a sophomore and having another yep. year of experience kicks in. Yep. So we will see what the umpiring crew does here. It's a, a big, big call here. Would make it a one-run game in favor of the Terrapins. They're still deliberating in the replay booth down the first baseline. The Michigan faithful, as long as the Michigan defense, patiently waiting to see what the blue tandem 
come up with. So should so should that stand? Eddie Apokian. From our angle, we get a little bit of a weird perspective from it. From yeah, point. ours is a tough angle for sure. I thought it was foul. I was Maybe I'm a little biased, I but it curved a little bit left. Yeah. At the end of it to make a foul ball, but we are sitting right behind on play, and we are Wolverines fans at the end of the day, as we are University of Michigan students. But yeah. We will trust the umpires on this call at the end of the day. Yeah, and they're both, both their reviews have been spot on in this one. So we will see what they come up with here. They're still deliberating. This is the longest replay review of the game so far. Their third of the game so far, longest by far. Looks like they're about to take the headset off. Headset so they have right made now. a decision. We will see what they come up with here. Very close play again. Chris Sapokian rips one down the left field line and call the home run initially. They jog out and they will call it foul. They will they will call it foul. That's a big call. That's so we are still at a tie there. game. Oh wait, let me or not, still. That was a confusing, confusing signage from the umpire there. It looks like the home run will stand. Now so Chris's Eddie, older brother, Hetty, will step in. That was a weird call. I thought they would I also thought it was a foul from the call. Yeah, that was weird. Was the fans cheer a little bit. Yeah. You, are, you do see a sizable Maryland contingent here in Ann Arbor. So with the, on that first pitch, Kurt Barr dials it back in for a quick strike. So he will deliver again on the Outside part of the plate will skip past the catcher and Will Rogers, but it doesn't matter with no runners on, so the count will run even. So it's a six to five ball game, despite the missed call by me. But so Pokin will fire that back up to the pitcher nonetheless. The second baseman will make the play and Tim Brook for the easy ground out. That was a that was rifled back up Kurt the middle. Hit in the leg by that one. Oh, was he hit by the leg? I didn't. I, th I think it hit him. Oh, I didn't. Oh, I didn't see that. Nonetheless, fired back up, easy ground out for Mac Timbrook. So, quick out for Kurt Barr to dial it back in after the home run. Same Hone Arbor dig in for the third time. Who's for the fourth time? Two for two with a single and a double and a walk in this one. And he starts the at bat with a big swing and a miss. Way on top of that one for a quick strike one with one out. Her bar will deliver again. That pitch will fall just under the zone. We run a 1-1 one, one count with one out. Bar will deliver, and that is shot right back up to the second baseman who was playing the shift but just got past Timbrook in the right field. Vaught quickly gets the throw back in, and that's a... Single for Honar, his third hit of the game. Honar's had a great game today. Yeah, I agree. And Kevin Keister comes in with a runner on with one out. It's Maryland's 13th hit of the game off 27 at bats. They're hitting at a 41 clip. So great offensive production for the Terrapins as Keister takes that one for a ball for a 1 0 count. You're seeing from both teams just solid contact all around. A lot of, a lot of hits rifled back up to the pitcher, or to the middle infield. It's been an active game for sure. It's more fun the f for the fans in that way. That next pitch by Barr will be called a strike. One-one count. You see tenacity from both sides. A lot of even counts. A lot of fighting to switch the momentum of at bats. So Keister digs in again on the back half of the box. His right foot on the chalk will set. And that'll be a ball in the in the turf. So hard not to say in the dirt. So it's a two one count, one out. Keister at the plate. Honar at first. Bar not not to be phased. The runner will go. Fired it off by Will Rogers. 
little inaccurate, but the runner will be safe. So Honar with a stolen base. Showing some real speed from Honar right there. I think even if that was an accurate throw by Rogers, that he still would have not gotten it in time. Yeah, his fourth stolen base of the season. Keeps up the perfect stolen base record on the season. And Barr did not seem phased with Honar at first. I was just about to say it, but Honar beat me to it. So we'll do it again. 3-1 count. Barr checks back. We'll deliver. And that'll be fouled back by Keister to run the count full. We will have Jacob Orr following Kevin Keister here, but into the action here, Barr will look back, winds up and delivers, and that'll be fouled towards the Michigan dugout at Dribbler. Not good contact at all, but we'll do it again, a full count with one out and runner on second. This has been a fight this inning between uh, Barr and the uh, Maryland hitters going back and forth. Yeah, certainly, and that's a big cut from Keister, but a big strikeout nonetheless by Kurt Barr. His third strikeout of the game. You know, that, that's a big momentum swinger after, after the home run and after the hit, base hit. It undoubtedly is. I mean, Kurt Barr already has three strikeouts to Yep. Um, I think there was only six strikeouts in the first four innings. I mean, he's right. already played two innings with three strikeouts. So that'll get, that first pitch will get past the catcher and Will Rogers. The runner will advance to third. So Terrapins have a runner 90 feet away from home from their seventh run of the ball game. With two outs already, we'll see if the Wolverines can uh, prevent this third runner from getting in. Yep. That next pitch will fall in for a strike. 1-1 one, one count. Honar at third. Calarco on deck. Kurt Barr settles it in, right foot on the rubber. Winds up with his left, deals. That'll fall just on the outside part of the plate. David Buck did not bite on that one, so it'll run a 2-1 count. Hitters count for Orr here. 0 for 3 on the day. Two fielders' choices and a strikeout. Or will wait. High, high and inside pitch. For the third ball in this at bat, so a 3 1 count. And if you're the Wolverines right now, what you do not want to do is walk someone because if Calarico has been able to make contact with the ball coming up at bat. Yeah. So that'll be ripped to Cole Caruso at the hot corner. He will fire it off to first. Great defensive play from Cole Caruso as that was a rocket off the bat of Orr. Well, nonetheless, Kurt Barr gets out of the jam, but the Terrapins plate one run off the Chris Hopokian home run down the left field line. That was a questionable call. Hugged the line, but after replay review, that call was confirmed. It is a 6-5 to five ball game now. And now we'll see if the Wolverines can turn it back around and uh, stay on, stay pitching a little bit because from what we saw in the last two innings of them, uh, they have not been very successful while they were batting. Yeah, so we can, we'll can. we see if Michigan can replicate what happened in the, in top of the, in the bottom of the fifth. But before that bottom of the fifth, this game... Not looking good for the Wolverines. Really it was not looking good at all. Couldn't get any offensive production across, but really exploded there. In one inning, they were able to in get one inning. runs. Yeah. And that's and pretty much been the whole offensive efficiency that they've had. And that's all you need. You know, you need one good inning to be something across, and you you immediately put yourselves into a ball game that some people in the some people here at Ray Fisher could have written off the Wolverines. Absolutely. But nonetheless, we'll have Mac Timbrook coming up with Will Rogers, who already made a big impact in this game with a three-run shot to left field to tie this ball game up. So Mac T Timbrook will step into the lefties batter's box. 
He's two for two in this one. He's had, had himself a night. With a single in this one and a double in this, an RBI double in this one that scored Darnetti. And he scored off the Will Rogers home run. That first pitch is in the dirt for a ball. Easy take for Tim Brook. He will step into the box again. Sarcone will stand. Wait as Tim Brook rests the bat in the shoulder, will lift it off. And that is off to first, grounded there. Easy play from Eddie Hapokian at first. For a Tim quick out number one. Weird contact with the ball right there. We got it straight to the first baseman. Yeah, he definitely got the top of that one. That was an easy play from Apokian. Should I say Eddie Apokian at first for the easy play. We have the Apokian brothers at the corners for the Terrapin defense. Eddie at first and Chris at third. So as we see, Will Rogers, big swing on the first pitch. Looking to replicate what he did in the fourth. He falls behind 0-1. He sets, waits for the next pitch. Inside pitch looked like to be out of the zone, but called, us, called, strike. yeah, called second strike from David Buck, the home plate umpire. And we'll do it in 0-2 count with one out. Will Rogers waits, checks his swing on that one as that one was in the turf. Good restraint there from the junior catcher. It's a one-two count. The lineup will flip over after this at bat. Will Rogers swings at the turf at that one. Drop third strike. Throw it off to first. Nonetheless, quick second out. Will Rogers strikes out on that one. And that is Sarcone's second strike out of the game. And the lineup card will flip over the Wolverines as A.J. Garcia will come on. One for three in this one with a... He started off hot, A.J. Garcia. He started yep. off very well. Lead off double, if you recall. So he sets in. Takes He's a kind of cooled off. Yep. This game has gone by. He's still a big bat for this Wolverine team. He's certainly big bat been a with some speed also as we've seen. Yep. There. Takes that first pitch in in the turf 0-1 or 1-0 I should say. Dribbles that one just about 10 feet in front of the plate on the third base side in foul territory. Nonetheless, the count will run even with two outs in a 6-5 to five ball game in the bottom of the sixth. Sarcone will deliver into the zone for a strike. 1-2 count. Garcia Sarcone didn't. pitching efficiently too, just like the person that he relieved. Yep. 28 pitches, two strikeouts. We don't see anybody in the pen for either teams as Sarcone delivers. That is on the outside part of the plate. The Michigan dugout wanted the rain up there, but to no avail. And A.J. Garcia in a 2-2 count with two outs. Waits. The payoff pitch. And that'll fall in there for a strike. Run up on a, on a strikeout looking. From Garcia, I expected a big swing there. I'm yeah. It, I expected him to let one fly. That looked like that caught a decent chunk of the plate. If he yeah. ripped on that one, that certainly had a good chance. Thing, yeah. yeah, certainly had a good chance to be in play, but looked patient out there, but rather too patient in some instances. And it's a big strikeout for Sarcone, who's come up big in relief. And Kerpar stays on the, on the pitch. We'll stay on the mound with 37 pitches, three strikeouts. And when the current part's on the mound, they've been doing well this season. He's three and one. Um, he's allowed 25 hits, um, 24 strikeouts, and only four home runs. So Kurt Park seems to be a good person to have on the mound for the Wolverines this season. He's really been something that someone has been consistent when he has been there. And uh, as they're warming up here at the top of the seventh, it is the Terrapins leading the Wolverines six to five. It is beautiful weather right now. Not too hot, not too cold. Yeah, I just got too hot. I take the I had to take the quarter zip off, but <laughs> the sun's really coming down, so that'll the pose sun a challenge. Is coming down, yeah. That'll pose a challenge for 
batters as it's coming right down in front of seems to be enjoying the weather right here. Yeah, it's, it's been a, weather. Well, it's been a frigid week here in Ann Arbor. The wind's been killer. Gusts of like 30 rough. miles an hour this week. 30, yeah. 40 miles an hour. It's ridiculous. It's like absolutely rough. ridiculous. So we'll see Alice Calarco dig in to lead off this inning. It's been one for three in this one off a RBI in which he scored on. Kurt Barr again on the mound. 37 pitches through. Three strikeouts in this one as he delivers the off speed we're into the plate. Seeing the finesse again yeah. from Kurt Barr. Yeah, that was floating right up there, but right above the zone. So Clarko will work this count 2 0 in his favor. Clarko waits, takes a stab at that one, but that rolls foul towards the Maryland dugout. So it'll be a 2 1 count with no outs. Devin Russell is on deck, who was replaced, who replaced Glennon earlier on in this one. That's a called strike to even up the count 2-2. Two -two. Looked low, but nonetheless called strike from Blue behind the plate. We'll do it again. Clarko sets in. Kerpar checks the wristband. Sets the right foot on the rubber, left foot ready for the windup. Winds up, deals. That's a big swing and a miss. By Calarco, Kurt Barr's fourth strikeout of the game. And that was big. Calarco wanted it, and Kurt Barr put it exactly where he was not able to reach it. Yeah. Gets him on the off speed, as you've said, in this entire game. Kurt, Kurt Barr's ability to really finesse those off speed pitches into the zone. Had a great game so far. Four strikeouts already on 42 pitches. You're exactly right. Other than that one questionable home run, great game so far. You're right. As Barr falls behind, 1-0. He will deal again. That will just be on top of the zone for another ball, 2-0 count. It looks like some of those high pitches look like to be in the zone, but David Buck not budging. Barr will... Pitch it again. That will fall into the zone for a strike on an off-speed pitch. Looks like the slider will fall in there. And a 2-1 count. Russell delivers. Russell waits. Rips on that one. Grounded to Caruso at third. We'll fire that one to first. Put it on a leash. That was a great throw. Yeah, and that looked that sounded like more solid contact than a grounder. I was expecting a line out there but nonetheless great play from Caruso to fire that one to first and snag that one in as the nine hole hitter and Elijah Lambros will come in has had himself a great game with an RBI single a, another single in which he scored on but a strikeout in the last at bat and he will take that off speed pitch away for a strike And Lambros, the transfer from, from South Carolina. It's all Big Big Ten third team last season. Perennial starter at center field since he transferred from Columbia to College Park. As he waits for the 1-1 pitch, Kurt Barr delivers into the zone for a strike. Works the count back into his favor. 1-2 count with two outs. Checks the wristband. Looks for a big strikeout here. Will deliver low and away. Easy take for Lambros to even the count up two and two. For the Wolverines, keeping this game close and not letting the Red Rays escape again like they did before is very important because at the top of the seventh, there would not be much time to uh, not to come back. Right. So Kurtbar will deliver. It's a big swing and a miss by Lambros. And Kurt Barr fans his fourth Terrapin batter, second of the inning. That's a big strikeout to keep this game a one-run game. Six to five is your score. Wolverines only down one with the heart of the order coming off for the Wolverines. And Rustich, Priest, and Stanton who have already proved to come up big in this one. So let's see if the Wolverines can take advantage as it is the seventh inning stretch in this one. 
But fortunately, it's going to finally capitalize. Yep. Because they can't wait until the fifth inning or the fourth inning again because there won't be enough time to mount that comeback. Like we keep on talking about, They're, they need to be able at some point in this game and for the whole season be able to turn it on at the good times and not be as inconsistent as they've been today. Yeah, no, I would agree. I'm sorry, Vaught will lead off the inning in this one. Seventh inning stretch just ended. That, that, it is so nice to hear taking me out to the ball game again. That's all I'm going to say. And <laughs> it's great to hear seventh inning stretch. Fortunately for you viewers, WCBN is commercial free coverage of Michigan Athletics. So you get to hear us talk through another intermission as we transition into the bottom of the seventh. With Vaught coming up, Rustich following, and Priest as a third batter in this inning. We still see Sarcone on the mound for the Terrapins. And if you've been living this commercial free coverage of WCBN Sports, make sure to follow us on all social media. We have Instagram, we have Twitter, where we'll post when we're going live. And if there's a Michigan athletics event, we're probably there, we're probably live, we'll be yep. there. No, exactly, we do have Sydney taking photos of us. She already posts on social media, so make sure to follow that. She's had a great impact on the station as far as our social media reach. As Mitch Vaught takes that one low and away for a strike. Michigan Faithful did not like that one. He checked his swing but came across the plane as Mitch Vaught checks his swing again, but that one is a ball to even up the count. We are two hours and 17 minutes into this game. It's gone by quick, I'd say. I agree. Mitch Watt, big swing, but fouled. Make it a one-two count. You know, we've seen some great pitching, but also some great offense from both teams. It's been an even one in this one. Sarcone will deliver. Vaught will ground that one down the third baseline into foul territory. We'll do it again at a one-two count. And the one thing we keep on mentioning about the difference in pitching between these two teams is the efficiency of the Terrapins. They really seem to be more efficient with the way they're pitching. Yeah, I would ag definitely agree. Mitch Vaught rifles that one to center field. That will land just in front of the center fielder in Lambros. So Vaught is on with a leadoff single. Lambros looked like he could have made a play. Oh, he's about one foot away from making One foot away. Play. You're right. It, it looked like it bounced straight under his glove. Yeah, I thought he I thought he'd make the diving play there, but nonetheless, that was just outside his glove. And Steven Rustich will have a great opportunity here. The power bat. And great decision by Voigt to not get too greedy and advance to second base yep. and stay home. And again, you see solid contact from the Wolverines straight back up the middle. So Rustich will take the first pitch for a strike. That was a hanging curveball. Certainly would have made some damage. That saw a good chunk of the plate if he ripped on that one, but held back on that one. 0-1 uh, count with no outs and Vaught on first. So Sarkhan will check Vaught at first to no avail. We'll do it again. Nothing in one count. Sarkhan checks the wristband, checks the runner at first. Will likely not throw over. Will pitch to Rustich. That's an inside pitch mishandled by Devin Russell. And Vaught will advance to second. Great heads up base running from the sophomore. And he advances now into scoring position with Rustich still on. And now all that's missing is a Wolverine player to be able to make some genuine contact and give Voight an opportunity to make a run for it. Right. Do you think anything in the outfield, at least you think about the opportunity of scoring. Vaught does have some speed, so got to be weary of that if you're the Maryland outfield. He will deal. Ooh. He will rifle that one to right field. He will make the play in right. Jared Orr will make the – Jacob Orr, excuse me, will make the play. That was about five feet away from the warning track, but Vaught will advance to third. That was a towering shot by Rustich. But he does his job advancing the runner 90 feet, and now the Wolverines are 90 feet away from making this a tie ball game. As Colin Priest digs into the box, he will actually be pinch hit for, and this one for, I believe that is Jack Council. Yes, that is Jack Council. The freshman from Whitefish Bay, Wisconsin, the son of 
former Brewers manager, now Cubs manager, Craig Council. So he will dig in in place of Colin Priest in this cleanup, in this cleanup spot. Interesting decision making. Yeah, because Priest has had a good game with that a good game? an RBI double and scoring off of it. Very interesting decision, but I'm sure there's a reason for it. I guess we'll find out soon enough. Well, Jack Council, I'm sure he has experience beyond his years with having a MLB manager as your dad. <laughs> a little bit of a cheat code. Yeah, so. So nonetheless, his dad made the surprising move to move to division rival Chicago after being in Milwaukee after all those years. But Sarcone, the infield and the pitching coach will meet with the pinch hit change. So Jack Council is a prime. He, this is his role on the team so far as a freshman. His primary pinch hitter. He went one for one as a pinch hitter against Michigan State on Tuesday. And he raked in high school. 483 average as a junior. One or one one hundredth of a point away from batting 400 as a senior. And he's the number five prospect in Wisconsin. High school teammates with the runner on third, Mitch Vaught. Really? Yep. Wow. From Whitefish Bay. Wisconsin. So Council will dig in. In a big opportunity, the infield will play in. All around the horn, they will play in. They will play on the base pass. So they don't want anything to get past them. As Council will swing at that one, that'll be flied out to right. Vought will run on that one. And he will be called safe. Safe at the plate is Vaught, and it is a tie ball game, 6-6 six to six for the Wolverines. And Vaught's aggressive base running yet again keeps the Wolverines impressive, alive. Impressive maneuverability by Vaught as he was coming there because we, can saw, we saw from him that he shifted his body a little bit to the right to avoid the tag. Right. So Council did exactly what he needed to do, score the runner from third. And that was about midway between the warning track and the infield. It was a bad throw from Orr at, Orr at left. As Stanton rips that one down the line and left, he will round first, digging for second. He will slide in there. Could have been a stand-up double, decided to slide in head first, slide and that is... Also slide in with style. He definitely slid in with style. And that is a quick double following the sacrifice fly from Jack Council. And the Wolverines have some offensive of momentum in the bottom That's of the seven. That's what we're talking about, yeah. the momentum shift. And with two outs here and a runner on second, we'll see if, if Caruso will be able to make something happen. You're exactly right. We update the scoreboard. Bottom of the seven, 6-6 six, six ball game with Cole Caruso at the dish. One for three, grounded out to second in his first plate appearance. Scored on a single in his second and grounded to third in his last plate appearance. He digs in, 1-0 count here. Takes another stone cold take to get himself ahead 2-0 with two outs in this one. As Darnetti will be on deck. I wouldn't have been shocked if they go to a pinch run or pinch hitter here as Cole Crusoe will rip that one in the left center field, and that is down for extra bases. The runner from second will score in Stanton, and Cole Crusoe again comes up big with an RBI double, and Michigan now takes the lead 7-6. That was an absolute perfect placement. Put it right in between the left outfield and the center outfield, right where Neither one of them could get it, bounce off the wall back in. And they were able to uh, control Cruz and only keep him on second base, but um, Stanton was able to rally at home. Yeah, and as far as Michigan's offensive production goes, it comes in spurts. You're seeing, when I mean, you saw a five-run bottom of the fourth earlier, that came in a spurt, and then you see a two-run bottom of the seventh. Yeah. And again, that comes in bunches. You don't, I mean, you don't see consistent offensive production, but you see it coming, you see it coming in bunches. After Sarkoon was pitching very consistently for the time that he was in, yeah. he seems to have crumbled a little bit in this inning. So he will be swapped out. He had a decent a decent appearance here. And three and a third innings pitch, he's allowed four hits, two earned, have come across, one walk, three strikeouts. 
three extra base hits on 46 on 46 pitches. So we see Nick Darnetti coming to the box. He's 0 for 3 so far, but scored on a fielder's choice in the fourth. So we will see who comes in to replace. Can't see the Suns really glaring into the press box. So we will see who replaces Tristan Sarcone. Looks like a single, looks like a single digit number. So it'll be number zero, Logan Barrier, the red, the red shirt senior from North Las Vegas, Nevada, and is a team leader in many categories. ERA record, least walks allowed in the lowest whip. He is the transfer from Lawnwood University, formerly a reliable bullpen staple, recently transitioned into the rotation as a senior at Lawnwood. In 11 starts, he had a 5.24 ERA with 57 strikeouts, and just last week pitched a two-inning shutout out of the pen against Michigan State, allowing no hits, no runs, but no strikeouts. So he has an innate ability to force balls in play. So he will be tasked here by the Terrapin coaching staff to get out of it, one inning, stop the bleeding with a runner on second, just to keep this game at a one-run game. And an interesting decision with already two outs and only one runner on second. The Maryland coaching staff really did feel the necessity to do this at this moment and not wait another inning. Yeah, you're exactly right. So Kyle Darnetti will set in, the senior. Again, not a great night from him so far, but he has scored on a fielder's choice, and he was part of that five-run rally in the bottom of the fourth. So Barrier will set in for his first pitch, the righty. Close to hitting That'll be inside for a ball. Easy take from Darnetti. Still in a big spot here. The runner on second in Caruso. He will deal. Pitch way outside. Lucky for Russell to crowd that one in to prevent Caruso from advancing. So we'll run this at bat. 2-0 with two outs and a runner on second. The new pitcher in Logan Barrier coming in. So he will deliver another outside pitch. He's quickly down 3-0. We'll do it again at a hitter's count with Mac Timbrook on deck. Should Darnetti reach on a walk or by other means, he will deliver. Called strike, make this a 3-1 count. Great job to just get something across the plate. Three zero count, two outs, runner on second. And that'll be fired two second and Honar, he will fire that to first and easy ground out. So Burrier did exactly what he was asked. Got that last out to stop the bleeding, but Michigan scores two in that inning. Now and again, the offense production comes in spurts. But the top hit now, Wolverines hitting seven to six. We'll see if the Terrapins can come back now. I think this is the first time the Terrapins have been down the whole game, right? Mar no, oh, yes, this is the first time Maryland's been down. They've been tied for most of the game. Yeah. To remind you, that was a Jack Council sacrifice fly that scored Vaught, and Caruso ripped a double off the wall in left center field to score Stanton. Nonetheless, offensive production comes in spurts for the Wolverines. Sure. Sure. Oh, sure. Sure. So Kurt Barr will stand in again for the Wolverines. And he's been pitching really well in this one. 51 pitches so far. So not too efficient, but more efficient than. More efficient than his predecessors today, that's for sure. Right. He does have five strikeouts, and they've been in crucial moments of the game for sure. Yeah. So we will see Braden Martin coming in. And yet again, this Maryland lineup flips over. And he's had himself a game. And this top of the lineup has been no dangerous. 
part. Yep. For Wolverines. She's two for three with singles. Came across and scored on each of them. Came or drew a walk, but grounded to the pitcher in the last at bat. He will take that first off speed for a strike. He's quickly behind 0 and 1. Her bar looks to settle in again. Continue. Good, a good pitching performance. As as Martin pops that one up to shallow left field. Shortstop and Darnetti will play that one for the easy pop-up and a quick out number one for Kurt Barr. So up next is Chris. Chris, Chris Hacopian has yep. been playing better than his older brother, actually, this game. Yeah, he's been out dueling his older brother. The younger brother showing up his older brother. <laughs> And this one with a big home run, his seventh home run of the season. And he's a big hitter, Chris Copian. Yep. So we'll see if Kurt. So we'll see if Kurt Barr tries to challenge him again or tries to pitch around him. We'll see. He pitched right at him for an easy first pitch strike, but that one's in the dirt to even up the count one and one with one out. So we are at a six-six ball game or seven to six ball game, I should say. In the top of the eighth. Great game so far here at Ray Fisher Stadium in Ann Arbor as Chris Apokian will foul that one back. And better for us, it's been a much closer game than many of the other the games previous the games. have been yep. playing. They've had a tough stretch. It's even been a change of pace for the softball. Softball broadcast as softball has really been blowing out teams recently. So we'll do it again. Kurt Barr will deliver. That pitch is on the outside part of the plate. Teaming up the count at two and two. And this is, even if, let's say worst case scenario, you come out of this with a loss. You still put up a fight against the back-to-back -back Big Ten champion. I'd say Maryland it's a great effort nonetheless. You can't doubt that. So Barb will deliver again on the outside part of the plate, and that'll be a ball to run the count full. 3-2 with one out. Kurt Barr has not allowed any walks yet, but five strikeouts. Barb will deliver right over the plate. Challenged. Chris Chris Hapoki in again. Count still full as he fouled that one back. Yeah, it's really big right here to get Chris Hapoki in out of the lineup with nothing to his name. Top of the eighth. But that pitch right on top of the zone called a ball. And that is a walk from Chris Hapoki who ran the count full following being down one and two and walked. And in some situations, you say you'd rather walk them than let them get a big hit. Yep. No, I would agree. Especially with someone you know that can really light it up. So Eddie Apokian comes in looking to match what his younger brother has done in this game. Has been one for four on a single. Grounded out to first in his last at bat. So Kurt Barr will get set and deliver. And that will fall just inside for a ball. 1-0 count. Chris Apokian leading off on first. Kurt Barb likely not be phased. By the runner on first. Checks the wristband. Looks back. Doesn't think anything of it. He will deliver. In there for a ball. Really close to snagging the bottom of the zone there. So he will be down 2-0. Kurt Barr waits. He sets, winds up, delivers. And that pitch That's been three high up again. For Kurt Barr. Yeah, it's I mean, he, the same area. he has found a home up there with breaking balls and fastballs to an extent, but we haven't seen misses like this Absolutely. yet. So we'll see what he does here in a 3 0 count with already walking his, already walking Eddie's younger brother. So two straight walks would not be ideal as that pitch falls right over the plate. For his first strike of the at-bat, 3-1 count. That's a good good tempo setter just to get something across the plate. Yeah, get some pressure off of him. Yep. Get back in the groove that he was doing for a good moment. And here's the pitch. And that'll fall just below the zone. Chris advanced to second. 
called a called a strike. Wait. Oh, if Chris just stole a base. Nobody noticed that. Chris Apogain just stole in unentertaining un un fashion, but Eddie's still up. And that'll be a ball. Easy walk. Steal really didn't matter, as he would have advanced to second anyway. So we'll see runners in, on first and second, the Apokian brothers. Impressive steal by Chris. Said not even we noticed it. Yeah, I didn't even know. Yeah. I thought it was a walk. I also it was a Home plate walk. umpire really didn't call anything, so I assumed it was a walk called ball, but I was wrong. As Will Rogers will meet with Barr for a quick battery meeting. Pitching coach stays into the dugout, so this will be quick. So Honar is three for three, has really had himself a game with uh, two singles, one of them as an RBI single and an RBI double, but has reached base in each of his four plate appearances with a walk in the fourth. And has not scored in any of them. Tracy Smith comes out of the dugout. Could be making a change here defensively or not. We will see a catching replacement, I believe. Will Rogers retreats back into the Michigan dugout. And Rustich will come out from left. So it looks like we're doing a triple switch. Maybe. We'll see. Maybe Rogers is coming back. I'm, I bet Rogers will be coming back. Rustich will be subbed out for Alfredo Velasquez. Will be Alfredo back. Velasquez, the two-way player, freshman from Melvindale, Michigan, two-time All-State recipient, potent on the mound and great as a position player. So we will see Velasquez in in left, correct, or on the mound. Yeah. Interesting coaching choices. Oh, yeah. You got the top of the eighth on the Twinnings left, and um, Rustic has been a great game in my opinion so far. Yeah, it's an interesting change for the Wolverines. I have not seen who they have done a pitch replacement, so Barr is out. They also seem to have done a catch replacement, but no one has come out of the dugout yet. We'll see. Uh, yeah, it could be Rogers switching a chest plate, but we'll see what he does. See what he does here. Um, Rogers, Rogers will emerge as a pitcher, I believe. Yeah, he will be pitching in replacement of Kurt Barr. So we'll see Rogers, who was on one side of the battery earlier, yeah, and absolutely. now he will be on the other side of the battery in Will this Rogers, top of the eighth. And Will Rogers will come in. Will Rogers had a very strong game on the mound uh, versus Penn State in the rebound win. It was a 96 win. That was on the Saturday game, the Penn State series, and he had an incredible game. So, right, trying to close it out with a strong, like with a strong person as he did before. Exactly. So we'll see at catcher. We will see Stephen Rustich at catcher. Actually, yeah, he's playing catcher. He is not listed as a catcher. So this is a interesting defensive alignment. So we see. Will Rogers on the mound, Rustage at at catcher behind the dish, and Alfredo Velasquez in left. Everything else status quo. Very interesting choice. So Will Rogers, again, a reliable bullpen presence throughout his whole college career, especially at Arizona State, but even here in Michigan. Pitched a 4.32 ERA, 19 strikeouts, eight walks, and a whip of 1.5. So he does have some good stuff on the mound, especially in this setup spot, effective setup spot for the Wolverines yeah. as they look to shut down the Terrapin offense as they go into the bottom of the bottom of the eighth. And I might be mistaken, but as I'm looking at, at a picture of Alfredo Velasquez, I'm pretty sure he's in one of my classes this semester. So that's nice, interesting. Nice to see a friendly face out there. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, it is weird seeing athletes in your classes. That's it why I'm weird, right? I had Alex Orgy in one of my classes. Really? Next, next year's likely starting quarterback. So that that's pretty cool. And I want to have like Will Johnson in one of my classes. That would like be cool. proven NFL guy. I'd want to see, but it, it's fun it. seeing them around campus. Like the the other day, I saw Colston Loveland, Mason Graham, and really? uh, Will Johnson walking into uh, the School of Education. It's like that's three cool. likely NFL stars. It's I mean, pretty cool to see at once. We go to a school where yeah. great athletes, great academics, mm -hmm. so it's an honor. 
Yep. Chosen call this game in to do this. Yeah, it's a, a great university, that's for sure. So we will get started with Will Rogers on the mound. Sam Hohenar will be his first test on the mound. Is that'll be starts with a breaking ball on the outside part of the plate for a strike, and he's ahead early. Great first pitch strike. To remind you, runners. Both the Apokian brothers are on on first and second. Will Rogers in a tough spot here to get out of a jam with one out. Allows the big swing and a miss from Honar way out in front of the breaking ball to get ahead 0-2 with one out. Will Rogers really relying on that breaking ball, really pulled the strain on that one to get ahead 0-2. So he will step onto the rubber, right foot back, retreats his left foot back, delivers. Into the strike zone, called strike three from David Bro David Buck. As and in the first, yeah. From Will Rogers, in the I first mean. batter he faces, he forces a looking strikeout. Great, I mean, to his name right, now. right? Great, he strikes him, he's out. great. Three pitch strikeout for Will Rogers as Kevin Keister comes up to try to produce something for this Terrapin offense, but. Will Rogers just in three pitches looking great. As that pitch gets by the catcher in Rustich, the runners will advance. So now two runners and the Apokian brothers will be in scoring position. Looks like it slipped off of Rogers' hand there. Rustich could not play that as it was right in between his legs. Both the runners advance, but two outs. Two runners in scoring position with Kevin Keister on, who's one for four in this game with a single in the first. Will Rogers delivers, gets back ahead with a strike. And he's got a lively fastball. He's really pitched with power. The crowd is loving this right yeah. now. Yeah, Will Rogers really come, seems to be a fan favorite. Seeing the confidence since, really into here. Since transferring from Tempe. And that pitch will be low and away. Another hitter's count, two and one. It's amazing. Will Rogers really didn't have any time in the bullpen and comes out and lights out like that. As Kevin Keister will yep. ground that to Dernetti at short, will fire that to first, and that'll be a out. Great defensive play. play from Darnetti for the clutch out and saves a run. Kevin Keister did not like the call, threw his helmet in disgust. As that was a close play, but a, a great roll. back. I was, I was surprised he chose to throw it to first base. I thought he had a much easier play just tossing it to the third. Yeah. But nonetheless. Nonetheless, it worked for him. And that was incredibly close, but a great throw. Man, Darnetti, great on the defensive side of the ball. Has saved now, I think, three runs yeah. from scoring. I mean, this without his defensive prowess, it would be a 9-7 ball game. Minimum. Minimum, at least. So again, great play from Darnetti, showing his defensive prowess. I mean, he had an awkward glove angle and had to come across it his was. body to get the throw in in time. And Stanton with a great stretch. Saved the run there. Keep things status quo at 7-6, to six, Michigan. And this could really make, make or break the game right here. If Michigan can come out and really put another run on the board, another yep. two runs on the board, you put Maryland in a very tough spot. Well, it's all about making whoever's on the mound, whether that's Rogers on the mound or that's whoever, making that, yes, making your, making them more comfortable, just putting more insurance runs up. A one-run margin, you know, it's, it's comfortable, but it's not the ideal situation. You want to be up by two or three coming up to the top of the ninth. So Mac Timbrook will step into the plate, has, her, has two for three with a single and an RBI double, which he eventually scored on following the Will Rogers pinch hit three run blast. Will Rogers will still hit in this one. Timbrook will step in in the lefty batter's box. Furrier still into the ball game. Will fires first pitch of the inning, low and away. Easy take from Matt, Matt Timbrook. And it's a 1-0 count. Boy, you can just feel the energy in the stadium I'll change after that. that, yeah. And that'll be That's rifled really back up Past the second baseman, inner center field for a base hit and a leadoff single for Matt Timbrook. And you see the offense powering. And again, as we were just alluding to, momentum completely swinging in favor of Michigan. 
it looked like Maryland was in control in this game for the first five innings, even with yep. the five-run fourth inning. It seemed like Maryland was still in control, but you've seen Michigan take the steering wheel and you know, take control. Exactly. I mean, what a game today by Tim Rickon. Four plate appearances. He's been on base three times. So. Yep. So Will Rogers already made an impact in this game with a three-run shot to the left. Tied up this ball game. Takes that first pitch loan away for a ball. And this has been a great offensive game. 13 hits for the Terrapins and 12 for the Wolverines. Six runs for Maryland, seven for Michigan. As Will Rogers will dribble that one in front of the Michigan dugout in the foul territory. Make the count even, one and one. Yeah, and this stadium's really come alive. They come a lot more energetic, a lot more involved into the chance. So Will Rogers sets in, cracks that one right back up into center field. Couldn't have been a better hit from Will Rogers. Barreled that one up. Timbrook will advance to second, and a yet another single for the Wolverines as Brooks reaches and the lineup cart will flip over. AJ Garcia, the leadoff hitter, will come on. What a performance by Will Rogers. Yeah. I mean, came in as a pinch hitter. Yeah. Crucial out, and now getting that line drive straight down the middle. Wow. What a performance what? by him. You're exactly right. What a performance. And A.J. Garcia will step in, shows bunt. We'll see if he pulls back. The corner infielders will run up. will pull back for a ball that was outside. 1-0 count. And I think this is the second time in a row that Garcia has shown the ball. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it, last time back, he did the same exact And it wouldn't be a too bad an idea to sacrifice himself to move the runners up. So he will bunt that one straight to the third base. He will make a diving play in the foul territory. For the out, unfortunate for Garcia, put a bunt into the air. Would have fall, fallen in the foul ball. territory, but lucky that Chris um, Hopakian was there, played in, and made the diving catch. What a play. And forced the first out, but runners on first and second still with Mitch Vaught at the plate. So Burrier sets in. Here comes the pitch, and Vaught will foul that one back. 0-1 count. So Mitch Vaught has been on fire, or has been hot so in the later part of this game, had a double in the fourth inning and had a run scoring single in the seventh. We'll see if that offensive prowess will continue in this game. Had a walk in the first. And here's where you want to see some smart decisions from the sophomore report. The runners on base, chance to take the lead here and really put the game away. Infield shifting left to see if he can push something out. And as mishandled from Russell, the runners will advance and will have two runners in scoring position. The Michigan Wolverines now have Timbrook at third. Rogers on second. Mitch Vaught still at the plate off a wild pitch. Russell huge. cannot corral in. That's and huge because. From our perspective, we didn't see a sense of urgency from Russell when he fumbled the right. ball. He just let it slide a little bit, and that allowed it. Tim Brook, I think, would have gone into third base either way, but I think Rodgers maybe would have stayed at first if yeah. there was some more sense of urgency from Russell. So great heads-up base running for the Wolverines. Mitch Vaught still in a 1-2 count. Takes a big crack at that one right to the second baseman, who thought about firing off to home. Fired it off to first instead, but Tim Brook at third scores. Rodgers advances to third. And Vaught drives in a run off a ground out to second base, and they expand their lead. Michigan eight, Maryland six. So if Rogers on third base, and, and Ro now. right, Rogers is still 90 feet away with with Herstich still up or Rustich still up. Silent H. Big power bat to have in this situation. Center fielder shading left, big gap in right center. He will rip that one back. Behind the Maryland dugout, way back foul. 0-1 count. And Barrier has struggled. He has had zero strikeouts while he's been at time, and he's made a lot of contact. Yeah, he's like, been a lot of contact. Yeah, he. Well, and that's what he, and that's what I kind of alluded to earlier. He's had that good ability to, you know, place stuff on the ground or in the air, but it's just been in the wrong places. Absolutely. Rustich will take that one for a ball. 1-1 count, two outs. 
Alfredo Velasquez on deck. Rogers just 90 feet away on third. Can really open up this game. Rustich will take that one in the turf into a hitter's count, 2-1 count. Great patience from the grad transfer from Northwestern. He will get set. Barrier will look down at the mound, right foot on the rubber. Left foot planted, will wind up, deals. And that is a shot to left field, right to Braden Martin. That was supposed to be a huge play right there. Yeah, that, I thought that was a gapper, yeah, but it was right to Martin and left. That would have been a perfect yep. spot. But the Wolverines plate one. Make this a 8-6 to six ball game, as this could potentially be the last inning of baseball we see should you know, should whoever's on the mound. And what a way to wrap up this game. I mean, from going to what seemed to be a yep. blowout at one point. Yeah. Now, 8-6, to six, the Wolverines leading the Terrapins. Yeah, and just knowing, you know, the history of this team, I, you know, I saw 5 nothing at first. I was like, you know, we're going to see it. You know what happened to Michigan State? Just a blowout. Exactly. I thought it was you know, gonna we're going to call another. Right. We're going to call a blowout. But they've really shown their grit, and determination, tenacity. That's really come alive as they come into Big Ten play. Will Rogers will emerge from the dugout, so he will aim to close this one out. Defense stays the same all around the horn. To review it, we'll have, we have Stanton at first, Timbrook at second, Darnetti, who's made some excellent plays at short, will stay there, and Cole Caruso again, another defensive. Uh, Great defensive plays there at the hot corner. And then from left to right in the outfield is Alfredo Velasquez, A.J. Garcia, and Voigt. And Rustich behind the plate. Is stay at the catch position. Yep. So this is. Well, you feel some energy. Yeah, I, I feel it. I'm not sure if you feel it. I definitely feel it. I'm keyed up right now in this tight ball game as Michigan looks to close it out. And Michigan will really look to put the pressure on right here because they're at the back end of the order, of the batting order, and that's been the weaker part of the batting order. They don't want to let it get back to the Hocopian brothers and to Honer, who's really been a strong hitter. Yeah. So I, they have Orr, Calarico, Russell, and Lambros. Yeah, you're up next. right. They don't want to keep it here. Right, no, you're exactly right. That's a good point, yeah. So Jacob Orr will set in. He is 0 for 4 on the day. One strikeout two, reached on two fielders' choices. You certainly don't want that to happen. You don't want runners on early on. But nonetheless, Rogers will set in, stands over the rubber, will deliver his first pitch of the inning, just below the zone for a ball. You know, a 1-0 count. Lucky for Rogers, is facing the bottom half of this Terrapin order as the top, top of the order has really been potent. He delivers outside part of the plate and quickly down 2-0. Wind has certainly died down. Temperature cooling down as Rogers delivers. That for a strike. Attempts to work back into a pitcher's count. 2-1 count. No outs to Jacob Orr. And that's an yet another. Two identical pitches right yep. there. Two right. identical pitches into the zone to work, your, work himself back into an even count. 2-2 two -two count. Will Rogers really feeling himself out of the mound. Or chokes up on the bat as that pitch will be outside. Lucky for Rustich to corral that one in as that one was halfway down the right or the lefty batter's box. So again, we'll see Orr crowd the plate. And that is a ball. And Rogers seemed to rush on those last two pitches. I would agree. Hey, those were quick. They were quick pitches trying to get them on those, track. Those were quick. Uh, right now, you're, you're the Wolverines are in control of the game right now. Yeah, you just can't be keyed up. Just got to settle it in. I mean, he proved it in the last half of the inning where he dialed it in and really made it work for himself by going at his own pace. So we'll see Alex Collardo dig in for a first pitch ball with a runner on. Colarco had a single in the third inning, but two straight strikeouts subsequently. So we'll see if... Rogers can force the golden sombrero. Rogers sets, deals, into the zone for a strike. To even up the count. Rogers walks back, gets set, takes a deep breath. Taking his time. Like we just said Taking his time. Exactly. That's it's all he needs before. to do. 
go at his own pace. So he sets, fires inside. Rustich cannot play it. The runner on first will advance to second. That is great for the Terrapins with a runner in scoring position with no outs. So we have a runner on second, Alex Collardo. Still at the dish in a 6-8 ball game. No errors in this one. 13 hits each for each team. And Rogers looks. Looks back to second. Fires up in the zone for a ball. The Maryland dugout really getting into it. Really supporting their team. It's a 3-1 count. You do not want to force two straight walks. Runners on first and second with no outs. Rodgers looks back, fires, and he takes a swing. That ball was at his hands, but nonetheless, wow. Calarco takes a swing at that one. That I wonder sweet. if he just got out of the way and kind of accidentally turned around on that yeah. one. But nonetheless, count is full, three and two. Runner on second with no outs. Larco practices swing. Rogers looks, deals, fires that one to Caruso at third. Line out. Great play from Caruso, and that is a big out number one. And that is great reflexes by Caruso. I mean, that ball came straight like to the side of his head, and he just put his glove up and, and yeah. straight into there. Fired straight to him. If, if he did not make that play, that was going straight to the back corner, and who knows how much that would That would have like likely scored or at second, so we will see Devin Russell, who was pinched, who was a defensive replacement earlier for Charlie Gannon. Russell will dig in for second at bat of the game as his, as Rogers' first pitch will be a ball. We still have not seen a first pitch strike in this side of the inning. We see Lambros take big cuts in the on deck circle. Rogers sets, looks back at second, deals to Russell who takes a big cut on the outside pitch. Teaming up the count one and one with one out. And Rogers kind of dialing it back in after letting the walk and being down in the count early. And another big swing and a miss for Devin Russell. Rogers that was, that was, again, that was a sure ball also. That really was, feeling it. That was not necessary for Russell to swing, but. Nonetheless. Devin Russell crouches, gets back into his stance. Rogers looks back at second, fires and hits him. Hits him on the, hits him on the. Looked like it hit him and might have hit the guard. I don't know. The Maryland dugout seems adamant that it hit him. The umpire is not too sure. The umpire and crew will discuss. The Maryland faithful and the dugout are adamant that it hit him. I tend to agree that it hit him. It sounded like it hit him. It you sounded, can you can like tell, it, that hit skin. But we'll see what the umpiring crew decides. It Yes, it hit him. So Russell will go to first, and Lambros will step into the bag, onto the plate. That so has there, to be rough. That's a, not a good break. Yeah, that's Terry, or Tracy Smith, excuse me, will come out, kind of get his spiel in. We'll retreat back to the dugout. Lambros sets in, has two singles in this one, one RBI single, so he's produced in this game. And he hits above 300 with runners in scoring position, so we'll see what happens in this one with Will Rogers with one on. And one thing to note, Michigan leads the country in forcing double base or double yep. plays, and a double play would end this game. So all Rogers really needs is force something in Darnetti's or Tim Brooks' hands as that first pitch is a ball, a fourth consecutive at bat, that is a ball. And there's been no double plays this game for the Wolverines. Yeah, they lead the country in that. They average yeah. around run in, one and a quarter a game. I think they have around 29. Will Rogers gets that one in. Rustich corrals that one and fires that to third. He will be safe. Both the runners advance, and now both runners are in scoring position with one yeah, out. Dangerous. This, you can't feel comfortable if you're on the mound for Rodgers or if you're the coaching staff in the Wolverines. So Tracy Smith will come out for a quick visit. The infield will meet. I haven't seen the Maryland dugout this energized since the they beginning of the game. They feel the energy shifting. Yep. All it takes is one good ball. 
They only have one out, so they can pretty much right. do a sacrifice play right here and tie it up. That wouldn't be too bad an idea if you were the Wolver if you were the Terrapins, excuse me, to you know put the defense in a bad posi bad position. Do you f stop the run from being scored? Or do you stop the runner from advancing yeah. to first? We'll see. So the mound visit is over. They will go to their respective positions. Tracy Smith back to the dugout. Lambro still waiting on a 2-0 count. Will Rogers is getting behind in all these counts, which is allowing Maryland to get on, whether it was a walk or a base hit. Lambro sets in. His right foot towards the back of the chalk. Will think about that one, and that one is a ball. Seemed Looked like, like, a, seemed strike. like a strike. Seemed that like a strike. Seemed like it got enough close. in the plate to warrant a strike. So it's a 3-0 count. A walk would load the bases. Rogers delivers, and that is easily in the zone. 3-1 count. And a good tempo pitch to just get, get back into it, not force a walk. Rogers quickly delivers again, and that's high for a ball. That seemed like a strike to I, us. I would, yeah, I, that feels like that could have been a strikeout. Two David two Buck right has been, of you know, David David Buck has been good at calling balls and strikes for most of this game, but it seems like of late, some questionable calls, and it certainly hasn't helped Michigan in this one. And we'll see the leadoff, Braden Martin, and this is exactly what you've talked about before. Exactly. Will Rogers did not want to see this part of the lineup. As that one falls in there for a strike. The first first pitch strike seen in this inning by Will Rogers. So we'll see what he can do with that. So it's bases loaded, one out in the top of the ninth. Rogers delivers another strike, two straight strikes over the plate to Braden Martin. You see experience difference. It's a junior pitcher against a freshman hitter. Yep. But he got a dangerous freshman who is Big Ten Freshman of the Week. Nonetheless, Rogers will deliver. Rodgers will foul that one back over the press box. And we'll do it again in the 0-2 count. The base is loaded. Now Rodgers can use this to his advantage. He knows that Braden Martin wants to hit the ball. Yep. He feels the stress. And now this is where you hope to see the experience kick in and deliver the strike. Exactly right. So Orr on third, Russell on second, Lambros on first. Rodgers delivers. And that one is high for a ball to make it a 1-2 count. The Maryland dugout really getting into it. See, see how Rodgers deals with that adversity of 40 people yelling at you. And we'll do it again after he checks the wristband. He will quickly fire off a pitch. And he rifles that one into right field for a base hit. Or will score. The runners will stay. Base is loaded. And now it's a run one, one run game. One out. Seven to eight in Michigan's favor. That's a big hit from the freshman, Braden Martin. As Chris, as Chris Ho, uh, Hokopian will set in. And Chris has had a great game. So For sure, so great far. game. He hit a home run earlier in this one, so he's got a big bat. As Rogers deals, another base load situation. As that ball falls in there for a strike, another first pitch strike. So one, one run came across off the Martin single. Rogers delivers, and that's fouled back over the Maryland dugout. To make it an 0-2 count. Rogers quickly ahead. A strikeout would certainly do wonders for his mo for well, momentum and for confidence. Incredible things right here for the Wolverines. I agree. Take some pressure off of that. Base is loaded right here. And one out. So Rogers, here comes the pitch. Low for a ball. And you see Chris Hopokian really get into the box early, kind of forcing Rodgers to quicken up his tempo as the Terrapins are taking advantage of that. Rodgers sets that one, and that is a fly out into shallow left. The runner will not advance from third. Would have been a smart play. It seemed to slip off Alaska's hand, yeah. but that is a big out number two. I thought we were going to see the for third Will Rodgers try to make a run for it. It, I, it was in shallow enough left field yeah. to where 
and that's a, that's a bit way too close. That's too. a stupid play to make, but Velasquez kind of fumbled that throw, but yeah. a big out no, nonetheless for Will Rogers and the Wolverines, and now they're one out away from sealing the win against the Terrapins. As Eddie Akopian digs in, one for four, knocks that one foul down the third base line. So we have bases loaded, top of the ninth, an eight to seven ball game for Michigan. I see both dugouts really getting into it. Everyone has some nerves. Everyone at the top step of the dugout for Maryland and for Michigan. Here comes the pitch. That is high to even up the count, one and one. You'll see he digs into the box. Bases loaded, one run game. One more out for the Wolverines. And that is rifled past the shortstop. One run will score. One gets past third and scores and Maryland will take the lead nine to eight. That's a big play from Eddie Hakopian. And the Terrapins take a one run lead for a three run Top of the ninth. And just like that, the momentum switches. And the momentum switches, you're exactly right. And I think Rogers just have to think to yourself, they have to minimize the damage and get the Wolverines back at bat because one run that's manageable to do, but if you still have two people on base right now, you don't want to give up anymore. Right. And that's rifle to short, just past the stretch glove of Darnetti. The runner from second rounds third and comes home. Runner on first goes to third. And yet another run for the Terrapins. Braden Martin was the runner that scored on that one. And that was solid contact that was Honar, from Sam okay. Honar. Made the difference. Sam Honar on yet another. Wow, have a, have a game for him. Kevin Keister digs in in a four run top of the ninth. Will Rogers looking to get out of it. Still one out, one out remaining to get out of it. And it's a, looking more surmountable for the Michigan offense as they have to plate two. And that's a big swing and a miss from Kevin Keister, who really looks to put this game away. But the Wolverines need, if, if things stand as they are now, need two to tie, send this thing into extras, three to walk it off. And another swing and a miss from Kevin Keister. Two straight pitches where he's way out in front of the fastball, or off speed. It will do it at an 0-2 count with two outs. Runners at the corners. And that one is in the turf. Rustage corrals that one in. And that'll be a 1-2 count. Rogers really needs to settle in right here. Deliver the final strike. I agree. Stop the bleeding. Just. Keep this a two-run game. A two-run comeback is manageable. manageable. We've Three seen the, we've, we've seen the Wolverines put up two or more in in an in, inning. In this one, that one will float just outside of the plate to even up the count, two and two, with two outs, two on on the corners. Kevin Keister on, who's one for five on a single. He'll do it again. Will Rogers sets. Here comes the pitch, and that one is into left center field. That will score the fifth run of the inning. And runners on first and second. Not a good inning for Will Rogers as five come across. And a big inning for Maryland. And now it's in a, it's an 11 to eight ball game. Let's put up five runs in one inning and then five runs in the other inning. And that one is ripped to left center field. That's carrying back. A.J. Garcia will make the play for the third out of the top of the ninth. But Michigan has a big task in front of them. They need to score three to the tie to send this into extras or four to walk it off. Your next Michigan batters are Fredo Velasquez, who has not seen in that bat in this game, who came in as a defensive replacement when Will Rogers came in to pitch. And then we'll see Dylan Stanton and Cole Caruso. Both Stanton and Caruso have come up big yeah, in this game at some points. They've both been able to make some plays, so 
This is honestly the ideal situation for the Wolverines at that bad order. This is, yeah, I mean, it's a great opportunity for the Wolverines. Just got to see if they capitalize on it. But nonetheless, it's a great game for the Wolverines. They kept it competitive through most of this one. You know, after that five run bottom of the fourth inning, they've really kept this one competitive against the two time back to back conference champions. And just a fun fact to note Maryland has not lost a series, a Big Ten series, since April of 2021. They haven't lost really? a Big Ten series in nearly three years. That's and what I it would do for I Michigan's think confidence. I think that is just right. To coaching. I mean, that is, that's incredible. It's a, an incredible feat, especially with the Big Ten. Like, they're not the SEC as far as, you know, college football or college baseball talent. But nonetheless, they're great. We will see a pinch runner. Anyway, for to break that series streak... And a, a win here would do wonders. So we will see. A freshman. You'll see Cooper Mullins step in. That's incredible to me. To pinch him. Just the trust that they have in the, in the Wolverines freshman is incredible. Yeah. It, three runs to at least stay in the game, and you're putting a freshman in yep. that has not batted today. So he's freshman infielder from Eugene, Oregon. Two-time All-Oregon team, raked as a senior, took the first two pitches on the outside part of the plate for balls, quickly up 2-0. and and he's, a, and, he play, and he's playing the role that Tracy Smith outlined for him, primary pinch hitter. He's in a big spot here as the Wolverines look to plate three to force this into extras or to four to win. So he's up early, 3-0, and no outs, no on. In the bottom of the ninth, And that one is a ball, a four-pitch walk. And that is stone, 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 just stone-cold patience. And that's maturity beyond his years to just take four straight pitches on the outside and not even flinch. But Dylan Stanton steps in. In his last at-bat, he scored on a double and had a single in this one. So he's two for four in this one. Runner on first, grounds that one down the third base line, but creeps in the foul territory. So he's behind 0-1. Cole Caruso on deck, so no changes as far as pinch hitting, and Kyle Darnetti is in the hole. Dylan Stanton waits, and that pitch falls just inside yeah, that, that looked like that caught good. enough of the plate to warrant a strike call but nonetheless even to count up one and one so Mullins on first barrier again at the dish grounds that again down the third base line foul and it's now an unfavorable position to be if you're standing yep We will do it again. One, two count. Burrier delivers right back to the pitcher. Second baseman Honar makes a play, rifles that one to first, and that is an out. Wow. Great defensive play from Sam Honar at second to go for the cross-body throw. That just shows wingspan and agility right there. To be able to wow. Stretch your He's coming across the body. And keep your foot on the plate. Came, a, yeah, came across the entire middle infield. That was impressive. And that's an out. They'll they review the play. The I thought he was out. A review wouldn't hurt as far as Michigan's chances, but nonetheless, Mullins advanced to second. So lucky for the Wolverines, that was placed in a good enough spot where he couldn't force yeah. a double play. So the worst case scenario, you have one out and a runner in scoring position with Cole Caruso, who has had a single and a double and an RBI double in this one. So he, ha again, has had a good offensive day in the plate in this one. So we will see it is being reviewed right now by the umpiring crew. It is being shown in the scoreboard in right center field. We're getting a look at it here. I, he looked out, in my opinion. Oh, that's a tough, tough angle. You can't see yeah, it's out of frame. The ball's out of frame. Great stretch. 
his foot is for sure down and the glove is up there. Yeah. The question is, is if the runner Great stretch by Ed, Eddie Akopian to get to that ball. I mean, that would have, if he didn't stretch that much, that would have passed. The runner would have advanced to third in Mullins. So Stanton standing his ground on first. I I think he's out. I'm I bet the call will stand. But worst case scenario, you have a runner in scoring position with one out. Cole Caruso on deck, who's been very good so far, and then Darnetti, who is 0 for 4, but what you know, else? a hit's gotta come across. Exactly. Yeah. So they're still looking at they're still looking at it in the booth. We have the replay the replay stand in the booth with us. And it's scoping out to be a beautiful afternoon. It is it, it, the weather is nice, it's taking the forty degrees, sun's coming down. So I took this game last minute, so glad I took it. It's a phenomenal game. Phenomenal environment here at Ray Fisher in Ann Arbor, Michigan. That's right. So after the conclusion of this game, you can stay on WCBN's coverage. He is called out at first, so the play stands. Great play from great play from the second baseman, a cross body throw and a great stretch at first. But the runner in Mullins is at second. Cole Caruso steps in. As I was saying, right after the conclusion of this game, you can tune in and stay within WCBN's coverage of Michigan softball as I take on Indiana and Michigan NCAA tournament regional coverage from the St. Louis area against North Dakota. Nonetheless, come back here to Ann Arbor. Cole Caruso steps up. Pitch outside, fumbled by the catcher and Russell. Nonetheless, Mullen stays put at second. And Caruso's up 1-0. One out here for the Wolverines and one person on second base. We'll see what they can make out of this. Anything in the outfield would probably score him. Cruz takes a big cut at the outside pitch. It was a great pitch. Do you even have to count one and one? Yeah, great pitch. Crusoe. So the dial it back in, steps back into the box. Burrier deals. Another outside pitch. Crusoe learned his lesson from the last pitch. Stone cold take. Gets ahead two and one. One out, Mullins on second. Here in the bottom of the ninth, 11-8 ball game in favor of Maryland. Burrier deals, and that is hit into the gap by Cole Crusoe into right center field. That's Mullins true. takes the big turn around third and will score to make this a two-run ball game. Cole Caruso yet again comes in big. That was an he, absolutely beautiful day. I mean, he put it right in the spot where he needed to be for a second base here to bring it all the way home. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, he stands at second. He could not extend that into extra bases, but Kyle Darnetti now stands in. Cole Caruso comes in big and at least places... And at least Michigan's giving themselves a chance. There's some offensive momentum. It's not a lost cause. Like, there was something that went on, but nonetheless, Kyle Darnetti steps in outside part of the plate. Russell had to die for that one to save a potential advancement from Caruso at first. So it is a 1-0 count. Burrier, Burrier's command looking a little shaky. And the pitching coach for the Turpins will come out of the field for a quick yeah. meeting. And that I would agree that is a good call. Well, Burrier needs to understand that he still is very much in control of this game. They're two outs away from bringing it home. And the Wolverines will need two runs with only one person. With Caruso, is the only person on base, and he's on first base. So he needs to just settle in and deliver a few good balls. Yeah, I mean, but you're seeing cracks, though. You're seeing solid contact into the outfield when Burrier's really looked good in this one. And after this, after their 80, hopefully he can do something with it. Tim Brook and Rogers will be huge this game. Yep. Up next. Tim Brook and Rogers, as you said. Tim Brook, three for four in this one. Rogers, two for three with a big three-run shot. But Darnetti is at the plate. One or 0 for 4, but reach 
scored actually on a fielder's choice. So there's a runner on first, 1-0 count, one out. Donetti at the dish, takes a big cut at that one. That outside pitch, and leaving up the count, one and one. Big spot for Darnetti to change some of the offensive woes that he's seen in this game. So we'll do a 1-1 one, one count. Timbrook on deck. Darnetti faces Burrier, who deals, grounds that to third, advances that to second. The runner's out at second, but Darnetti reaches base. So he'll reach on another fielder's choice. And that's a tough play. That's, that's really a tough, tough play. play. Because you're right back where you're now, except you have an extra out. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. So Mac Timbrook steps in as the Terrapins are one out away from securing a comeback win here in Ann Arbor and to take the first game of this series and look to continue the series winning streak that dates back to April of 21. But Burrier grounds that to second. Honar bobbles that. The runner advances to third, and he is out. Poor base running by Darnetti, who tried to take advantage so of the funny. bobble, advanced to third, dude. and is out by a mile. And that is not how the Wolverines want to end this one. And that was a great bat also. I mean, you would have had one on first base. One on yeah, you would have had runners at the corners with Will Rod. You're off. right. It's not how you want to go out, but still, great game. Maryland comes out on top 11 to 9 to the Wolverines. So again, your final in this one, Maryland with a uh, five run top of the ninth inning comes back 11 to 9. In both teams, you've seen an offense explosion from both teams. 17 hits for the Terrapins and 14 hits for the Wolverines and Maryland only had one error in the last play but didn't matter. Darnetti possibly Thought too much, thought too much of the error and thought too much of the bobble and perhaps too aggressive and Absolutely, sends the Wolverines home and the Michigan faithful home rather unhappy. But that'll just about do it here in Ann Arbor. Beautiful day for baseball. And you can, we thank you for tuning in to WCBN Sports' coverage of Michigan baseball. We will have a crew for both games on Saturday and Sunday. Right now, you can tune in to WCBN's coverage of Michigan softball as they take on the Indiana Hoosiers. And you can tune in to their coverage of the NCAA Regional as Michigan takes on North Dakota. Is there any final thoughts, Mayor? Final words, tough loss for the Wolverines, but it's a beautiful day in Ann Arbor, and there's still two more games this weekend. And thank you to all the fans listening in on YouTube. We appreciate it, and go blue. Yep. So with that, the Terrapins win nine of their last 11, so they continue a very hot stretch of late. So that'll just about do it here from Ray Fitch Stadium here in Ann Arbor and from myself, TJ Fossmeyer, and from my colleague, Mayor Cosner. We will end it as we always do with a good night and a go blue.